OTS News, my name is Mead Mark E.T. And what you just heard were the sweet sounds of White Bat Audio. That one was called Skynet. In other news, Jesse, tonight's co-host alongside JD from New York, has indicated to several sources that he loves, absolutely loves, Dr. Britt Baker, DMT. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, he is in the back. That's Dr. Britt Baker, DMT. Jesse loves Dr. Baker so much that he camps outside her dental office every single week on a Tuesday, right before Dynamite, with a bouquet of roses because he loves to see Dr. Baker smile on her way into work. Now, this has angered one Thunder Rosa, and Thunder Rosa has reached out to JD from New York personally and says Jesse has several fire Thunder drivers coming to him at the next wrestling convention. In other news, we have revealed Edgar Estrada does not like Jesse, and Jesse does not like Edgar Estrada, but Edgar Estrada has given us this statement, and I quote, Jesse is a bitch. Last call is out the bar. Ladies and gentlemen, come on up and get your Maxwell's Vintage Reserve. Number one, I mean, give me a break. Nobody's going to be able to afford this, so why don't you guys just stay seated? Because it is now time for the AEW Dynamite Post Show with your host, J.D. from New York. And that bitch, yes. <laughs> My goodness, man, up and down, left and right. This dynamite was all over the place. AEW Revolution is in the books. How are they going to follow up? Did they do a good job? According to me, I think so, man. There's a lot to be excited about coming out of tonight's dynamite. MJF is leading the new horseman. Christian is already targeting the AEW World Heavyweight title, which I can't stand. And Cody Rhodes versus Pentagon is a thing. Also, Darby Allen defends the TNT title against Scorpio Sky. And the AEW ladies our main eventing dynamite for the first time next week all this plus all your revolution news and rumors on the only show you need the most entertaining wednesday night entity this is your dynamite post show right here on off the screen
What is going on, guys? Thank you so very much for joining me right here on Off The Script. Look at me, guys. I'm a magician. One, two, three. Jesse is disappearing. Look at him. There he is, man. A black screen on my uh, on my end. Why? Because Edgar Estrada has paid to delete Jesse right here on the podcast, man. Unbelievable. Thank you, Edgar. Oh, there he is. Look at this shit. Oh. Man, oh, man. Edgar didn't pay enough money to, to delete Jesse tonight, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to everybody, bro. Jesse, what's going on, buddy? Nobody can hear you. Look, he deleted Jesse's sound and video. What's up? What's up, buddy? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I had a whole skit, man. I had a whole skit going on. What's going on? I was gonna, I was gonna uh, talk to Edgar about it, but he left the chat. He's gone. What? Fucking Edgar left, man. That's no, 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 no. Edgar, Edgar didn't leave. What are you up to here, clown? No, oh, man, he said he had to go. He said he had stuff to do. Oh, yeah, well, what is he pulling, the Miz? What has he got, the shits? Nah, man, I think he's going to listen to uh, Ryan Satin or something, man. Oh, gee, I may have to get rid of Edgar myself then. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my man. goodness. Edgar, Edgar took off on you, bro. Oh, Are you, oh. you, you can depend on that guy, man. I can depend on Edgar, man. No, Seriously. Man, no. Watch, watch. If you can depend on Edgar, watch this. Edgar, give me a one in the chat <laughs> if you can be dependent on <laughs> See? Oh man, Vegas look, 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 look. I, 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 legitim I legitimately brought out heel Jesse within the first 30 seconds of the show, man. Oh, look man. at that, man. Oh my god. Edgar's Edgar. not saying shit. Anyway, guys, uh, Edgar will join us in a second, I'm sure. Uh oh, 300. Uh, 300, uh, 300 <laughs> seconds. But thank you guys so very much for joining us here on the podcast, man. This is your Dynamite Post Show for March 10th, 2021. We got a lot to go over tonight. And it was a very, very newsworthy edition of Dynamite. In fact, it was actually more newsworthy, Jesse, than Revolution on Sunday. And I'm not going to waste any time. The big story going into tonight was Christian, what is Kenny Omega, and Don Callis, and John Moxley, Eddie Kingston. What is the excuses or the cover-up for AEW coming out of Sunday? What were they going to do to kind of rectify that dud, that botch in the death match on Sunday. But never mind that, man. I'm moving on past that. We'll talk about it at some point tonight, but we're moving on to more important things. The end of Dynamite saw Chris Jericho kick out MJF from the inner circle, and MJF, Jesse, has come back as the leader of the new, unofficially for now, until we get a, a proper name for these guys. But we and the community are calling them the new Four Horsemen I know you texted me when the show went off the air and you said, simply brilliance. This was fucking awesome. I didn't see it happening. I knew there was going to be a swerve. This was one of the things that a lot of people on this channel in the chat, even us kind of threw out there, but they went with this route and MJF is now the leader. He's the Ric Flair of the yeah. new four horsemen, Jesse. Yeah, the leader of the, the the new the new forty the new forty two horsemen stable. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, you need your teachers, you need your mentors, but MJF is going to thrive in this role. The one thing I will say about this, on top of how awesome it is, it, it goes to show you how Tony Khan trusts MJF with this type of role, man. Unbelievable. He's only twenty four years old, and I am super excited to see where he takes these guys because MJF, FTR, and you even got Sean Spears. He's going to feed off all of that energy and all of that success for himself as well. This is awesome, man. It is. It is. And if you really think about it, um, MJF's gimmick he he has to be in a stable, at least in a stable. Yeah. But his, his the way his gimmick is like just aimed the way it's headed he has to be leading a stable so it wasn't just good enough for him to just be, have a heavy with wardlow and him just being in in a circle wasn't good enough that's why i had him taken over in a circle but um leading a a, a new horseman stable is it's just it's it's more prestigious than than anybody small so i'll say some of the people here might even know uh i would that would take this over you know most mid-card titles yeah. I mean, because because the term the four horsemen is probably the most endeared stable in the history of all of pro wrestling. Well, this this has more meaning than the <coughs> the new NXT women's tag team championships, which is a waste of time. But uh, I digress, Jesse. Please continue. This is the AEW podcast. <laughs> I have to throw that in there, man. I'm fucking I'm ready to go tonight, man. 
What the fuck? But yeah, the the the, the Four Horsemen ha- has to be one of the most endeared, respected stables in in the history of all of pro wrestling. We're talking um, amongst names like the Freebirds, the Von Erichs. You know, the Four Horsemen are right there, top one, two, or three. And for them to bring it back up now in 2021, love it. And the people that they entrust with it, see people like like Wardlow and Spears are in it. People like um, uh, FTR are in it. They're relying on MJF to lead it. And they probably could not have made a better choice in this company. Yeah, man, this is uh, this is something that opens up a world of possibilities. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm already thinking about fucking Santana and Ortiz versus FTR, maybe a tag team championship somewhere down the line in the future for those two teams to be battling over. We got MJF and Chris Jericho obviously coming. And I even, you know, me and you talked about this several times. We didn't know who was going to be in that type of match. But, man, it certainly sets up for blood and guts. If everything is opening in the United States and things are slowly starting to get back to normal and all these other states are now lifting restrictions, 25%, 50% capacity in some of these stadiums now, you, you could be looking at blood and guts between the inner circle and the and the new four horsemen here for AEW, man. How awesome would that be? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, one would think, you know, the um in the, the role that the MJF would play, you know, we don't know what role, who plays what and what role, but we can look at the cast of people in the group and we can kind of tell who's going to play what role. You know, clearly, you know, Wardlow is the heavy. Yeah. You know, MJF is going to be the leader. He's going to be the mouthpiece, you know, and then you got Tully is the brains. He's the coach, you know, he's the, he's the background and everything else. And this state, a stable like this is, is it's extremely important to guys like Cody and, and Tony Khan, who's a big uh, wrestling geek himself. So they know that MJF has the star power to, to lead it. You know, you one would think that they would normally give it to a veteran, maybe like a Jericho to lead it, but MJF would be the the younger version, the newer version of a of a of a Ric Flair. Yeah, I, I you, you, well, you could definitely see the similarities for sure. And you know, you, you mentioned veteran Jesse. He, he's twenty four years old, but Jesus fucking Christ, man! I mean, he, he carries himself like a veteran. He's only been in the business for how long? Four years? Yeah, those, I think he started uh, uh, not I mean, that long ago, man. I mean, he's already carrying himself like a fucking fifteen year season veteran. He has he he has the poise. He has the gimmick. He has the chops for it. Um, the only thing he can improve in, and, not, and look, and I'm saying he can improve at it because everyone can improve at it. There's not too many people who can sit back and say, I don't need to, but he can improve in the ring, and that comes with experience. It's not like he needs to improve on the fundamentals. He has the fucking fundamentals. He can actually go in a match. I'm talking about the long distance, the um, the extreme. There's pretty much all the experience that comes with 10 years, 15 years of being a wrestler, stuff you just can't learn in a couple of years. When he gets that, he'll have the total package. There, yeah. there's, no, there's nothing stopping him. Yeah. Now this is uh, this is really exciting stuff here. I'm very uh, very excited to see where this all goes. Um, I don't know with the attack that we've seen tonight. Are you still in the mindset that Jericho is going to walk away for just a little bit after the attack? Obviously, after the attack, he's got to sell the attack. Maybe he goes away for about two, three weeks, maybe a month tops. Does he sell the attack and go away for a little bit, like you had uh, kind of brought up in the past before? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, from what I can tell, I, I think they went on the head and killed him. I think he, yeah. they wrote him off TV for a while. Um, how long? I don't know. I think it still comes back to what um, Jericho has going on. Um, if he has Fozzy issues, if he has uh, stu- uh, studio commitments, things like that. I think he might have just used his time to take the time off to do what he needs to do for on his personal level. And then he come back, him and uh, Inner Circle come back as fresh baby faces and try to destroy the horsemen. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I like it all, man. Especially with the uh, return of Sammy G tonight. He he made the return, and Jericho didn't want to talk to him with the camera placement in the locker room because he knew what MJF was up to, and they caught him red-handed. And I like the way that they made sense of all of it. I like the way that they brought Sammy back. It was refreshing to see him. I like the fact that Jericho and Sammy played off each other like they hated each other, and then the swerve came in, MJF. You know, he was never, he played it off like MJF usually does, but underneath that, he, he always played it cool because he knew he had a backup plan. And the reveal was made, the lights went out, we seen FTR and Tully and, and Wardlow and everybody just behind the inner circle. 
and it was the formation of a new faction in AEW. What'd you think of the reveal? I thought the reveal, AEW tends to do the same thing all the time with the lights going out. It's kind of cheesy, but what'd you think of the overall reveal when the lights went out and then you seen all of them standing there behind the inner circle? Uh, uh, I, I think if we, I don't know, if we get into the actual total reveal, are we, are we splitting hairs at that point? I mean, yeah, lights going out. You know, if they would have came out to music, we know we would have beat up on that. Yeah. You know, if they would have came out walking slow, you know, I would have asked why Inner Circle was standing there waiting for him. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, there was no winning in that one. They could have came running to the ring, but they'd have been looking like baby faces if they did that. So, you know, I think it might have in, in, in retrospect, it might have been the best way to go dark because they come running down to the ring to go be some. They look like baby faces. They, yeah. they need to look like the complete assholes here. Yeah. So, you know, thinking about it now that you asked it, I guess the lights going out might have been the best thing to do. You know, I mean, look the least look the least stupid and came off looking looking dickish, which is what they wanted to do. Um, but I, I just like the overall storytelling itself, because, yeah, they they set they set up the story and then they they set up the the obvious outcome. And then it looks like they set up the swerve, which is what. You know, I predicted I was predicting the swerve, but then they swerved the people who thought it was going to be a swerve and they came full circle. I liked it. It was done very well. Yeah, that's what I liked about it most, too. They they swerved the people who were uh, expecting a swerve. So uh, it yeah. was it was awesome. This, does this does this? I know we, we always talked about MJF and how high we are both on MJF and what he really just presents to us as far as the talent that he is, world championship material, one of the best heels in all of pro wrestling. Is this, after all this forbidden door stuff is open and Omega goes through this belt collector phase, which we'll talk about tonight as well, and this impact and AEW thing is wrapping up, do you see this taking MJF to that proverbial next level? We all know he's going to get to that next level, but is this going to get him to that next level faster? That world championship caliber, you know, oh my God, he's now ready for that AEW title. It it will. I mean, it's I don't know about faster, but it just kind of it 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 kind of um sets up the track that they want to put him on, as opposed to starting off the company and then putting the title on him. You know, which was you know what what was looked like it was gonna happen when he was in the, t- in the title picture. But then they didn't. They kind of st- took him back a few steps, and now they're going to end up pushing them back up in this major faction. They're just they're just laying laying the seeds for what they want to do. This guy is going to be on top of the company, and when when he is, they want to have all their ducks in a row because he's probably going to be on top for a long time. So they, they don't want it to look like it was pushed too fast or made no sense or wasn't deserved. They're going to put him through the ringer because he's going to have it all. Yeah. Yeah, again, the level of excitement that uh, both of us have here is is great. This is exactly what AEW needed. They needed some positive, positive talk to come out of Dynamite tonight after everybody was just completely disappointed and just shit on AEW for the amateurish mistakes that they made at the pay-per-view on Sunday night. This was a definite step. I'm not going to say in the right direction, but a definite step to correct all the wrong that had just just kind of kind of came down on them on Sunday night. They were heading in the right direction anyway. You know, they're not a yeah. perfect fucking company. They do things that I, I question quite heavily. But yeah. I think tonight was a definite step to correct whatever came out of Sunday. Yeah, I mean, look, that's that's what, you know, we're going to do here. I mean, I'm not I'm not here to just try to try to make AEW look better when they mess up. I mean, it if for me it'll be disappointing when they mess up because I want to see them, you know, be perfect all the time to be honest, but that can't happen. You know, I know it. They know it. Everybody knows it. So when it's just not right or not making sense, that's what we do. We'll call it out reluctantly. I mean, at least on my part, because I want to see them do well. But look, it, what I might consider mistakes might be just something that was unavoidable. And I, I use this same this same, you know, idea with WWE too. like some. We don't know everything about contract negotiations, when things expire. There's a lot of behind the stage, behind the behind the scenes shit that happens that that may, you know, curve creative, you know, might make us say, well, that makes no sense. And well, maybe it would if we were backstage. So that benefit of the doubt is there. It's just WWE. You, you can't that can't be the excuse week in and week out every goddamn week. You know, that's the problem there. And here 
I, I see things I don't like, but it doesn't happen all the time. So I'm willing to say, okay, benefit of the doubt. Let's see where they go from here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly with that. Uh, <laughs> AEW has done right. They've done wrong. Uh, WWE has done uh, 100% wrong, minus Roman Reigns uh, and Apollo, yeah. Big E, whatever's going there uh, on SmackDown there. But, yeah, I totally agree with that, and I, I don't want to come down too hard on them because I felt like we did come down. Uh, you know, we came down on them the way that they deserved on Sunday. They deserved it. They you know? deserved it. I yeah, mean, and, and that's, that's, that's going to be the thing here. You know, we're not, we're not shills. We're realists. And I, I take great pride in shooting from the hip. If you guys don't like that, I, I don't know what to tell you. But if it's bad, it's bad. Mm -hmm. If it's good, it's good. I've developed a reputation, and Jesse is with me here. He wouldn't be here if... You know, it harmed his reputation in any way. It's it's just the fact that we're realists. We, we like what we like. We we don't like what we don't like. And it's just, you know, the way I think it should be. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, guys, uh, I appreciate everybody being here. We got 1,600 people in the chat. Thank you so very much. Going to be a good night. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you have not done so. So go and do that. Become a part of the Army, the OTS family. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. I would really appreciate it, guys. Hit that thumbs up as well down below. We're at almost 400 likes. The normal goal for these live streams is about 750. Man, let's try and get 750 before we get on out of here. So hit that thumbs up. Make sure you guys follow me on social media, at JD from NY206. That is Twitter and Instagram. And if you guys want to support the show, you can always do that through a variety of ways. Number one, Patreon, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Some great perks over there. Go and check that out. Go and get your t-shirts. That is bonfire.com, the exclusive home of Off The Script. Make sure you guys go and check out all the other videos. If you missed anything from this past week, this past weekend, we got Off The Script. We got Revolution. We got Monday Night Raw. It's a big week, and we got bigger weeks still to come heading into WrestleMania, so make sure you guys go and check out everything if you missed any of the content on the channel. Links are down below. And today's podcast is brought to you by my good friends over at Dr. Squatch. DrSquatch.com. Don't be a smelly wrestling geek. Don't be a wrestling stereotype, man. Go get your Dr. Squatch. They got soaps. They got shampoos. They got conditioners. They got cologne. They got deodorant. They got toothpaste. Everything you need to keep your hygiene looking better than the raw ratings. Seriously, drsquatch.com. You guys are going to use code SCRIPT at checkout for 20% off. That is one of the biggest deals that I, that I give away on my channel, so make sure you guys go and check that out, drsquatch.com. You're going to use code SCRIPT at checkout. Jesse, let's start at the top here. Before we even get into the show, I, I might as well talk about this now because it has... Everything to do with the entire entity that is AEW. AEW was targeting accounts for posting about the explosive failure that was the barbed wire death match at Revolution. AEW presented this match, obviously, if you guys watched Sunday night in the main event, it was Moxley versus Omega, exploding barbed wire death match. Fans didn't complain about the excessive violence. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. In fact, it was the other way around. AEW doesn't want fans seeing footage of the ending at all. The company started issuing takedown notices immediately on Monday morning for accounts who posted video of the main event conclusion. If you took a screen grab of it, if you were there and filmed it on your iPhone or Android device and you put it on social media, everybody got a takedown notice by AEW. Several accounts in the IWC, such as Heal by Nature and others, received takedowns and more were targeted by the company as well. We had David Bixenspan, he is a member of the IWC, commenting on this situation and found it interesting how it doesn't seem to fall in line with the company's public narrative. Weird that the super fan-friendly, all-inclusive, totally not like the evil WWE empire Happiest place on earth wrestling company was so concerned about wiping their main event off Twitter since Tony said they had storyline explanations of Kenny sucking at making bombs. End quote. AEW is using the dud conclusion from Revolution in a storyline now. That doesn't mean that they want to see people, you know, talking shit about it or talking negatively about it. On that note, obviously, if you guys seen it, you remember it. 
Uh, I doubt anybody's going to have it on social media now because AEW and Tony Khan's been issuing takedowns about it. Uh, Jesse, did you hear about this story? And, and what is your opinion on AEW trying to hide the fact that at the end of the day, they fucked up and Tony Khan came on social media or he had the scrimmage, I believe, after the show was over and he kind of played it off as if, you know, the fans wanted too much or were expecting too much from the death match. He, he was like, well, what did fans really expect me to do? Like, what, what, did they, what did they expect me to do? Did they expect these two guys to be in the ring and everything fucking explode around them? And I'm looking at this guy, I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, boss man, shut the fuck up, man. You got to learn that when you're in front of a camera to say shit when you got to say shit and when you don't got to say shit, keep your fucking mouth shut. This guy came off like the biggest fucking geek on social media after this show was over, trying to cover up with explanations and asking people, what did you expect about uh, the match? What did you want me to blow everything up? If you're going to give me a death match, Jesse... If you're going to give me a death match, you better go all the fucking way with a death match. If you don't have any intention to fucking give me a true, genuine death match, then don't fucking book the match and don't put those guys in that situation. Because like you said and I said, at the end of Sunday night, you and I both felt terrible for the great match that Moxley and Omega had because of this sheer stupidity. Yeah. Yeah, man. It, it just, it, it, it kind of sucks because they put on a phenomenal match. They did. They killed it, man. They put on a phenomenal match. And at the end of the day, nobody was talking about it. No. Not a single bit. All they ever cared was about how the ending got botched. Yep. I think I think it was more about I think it was it was not more not not so much about, oh man, look, it's 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 all ruined because of the botch. I think it was more like, haha, look, AEW's not as cool as they think because this happened. You know? Because the the show was not bad, and it was awesome wrestling, and that main event was fucking great. Nobody was talking about it. No, that's the shitty thing about it, man. That everybody was talking about how fucking terribly botched that ending was. That nobody was going to be talking about the performance that both of those guys put on. And I believe I don't know who quoted him, but Vince McMahon was quoted once saying. The only thing that people are going to remember is the end of the match. And that's exactly what happened here. I don't know yeah. if it was Jericho. I don't know if it was uh, Meltzer or Alvarez or something along the lines. But I seen it floating around on social media. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. I hate the fucking old man. But Jesus, he is, he is correct 100%. Because that's all anybody's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's a little bit overkill, man. And I'm starting to starting to feel bad for the guys now as it pertains to this match. I mean, as far as, far as the guys who, even even the ones who botched it, I mean, whoever, whoever's, in, whoever's responsible for the actual botch, I mean, it's getting to the point where it was like, Jesus Christ, dude, did mistakes happen. It's live TV. Yeah, no, what don't do you, you think, no, no, don't you think if you were in Tony Khan's shoes, I mean, what, what do you realistically say? Obviously, he said all the wrong things on Sunday night. If I was in Tony Khan's shoes, because clearly, clearly it was a botch. Because uh, yeah. Eddie Kingston came out. He was expecting a fucking explosion. He covered Moxie with his entire fucking body. Eddie Kingston's not the type of guy to go out there and uh, and just half-ass anything. He expected a full-on fucking explosion in this thing. And that's why he went out there and played the part that he was given because he expected it was going to happen. I don't think Eddie Kingston would have done what he did on Sunday night if that was the fucking explosion. So it doesn't yeah, make any sense. His, his no. explanation, Khan's ex explanation, d didn't even make fucking sense. Then he goes on this scrimmage, this post-show after the goddamn show is over, and I would have said, you know what, guys? We fucked up. There was a technical difficulty with the goddamn explosives. We're going to come back on Wednesday. We're going to give you a goddamn good show, and we're going to correct this shit. So bear yeah. with us. Technical difficulties happen, but he's over here explaining storylines. Oh, Kenny Omega built a dud bomb. Motherfucker, Kenny didn't build the fucking bomb. Shut the fuck up already. Jesus Christ. What are we, six years old? Shut your, your mouth. Just up. come out like a man and say, hey, we fucked up. You you booked your two top stars in the main event of your pay-per-view match and left it to one of the wrestlers to take care of the explosives. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? That's his. That's his explanation. It happens. That's his, that's his explanation. <laughs> listen. I, listen. This. This is going to go down in infamy as one of the worst endings ever. It's probably not Tony Khan's fault. It's not Moxley's fault. It's not AEW's fault. It's whoever built the fucking goddamn uh, whatever rig around the ring. 
this, folks, this is not the only bad ending that we've ever seen in professional wrestling. I mean, all you got to do is look back at the, uh, at the 2019 Hell in a Cell with Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins. I mean, a Hell in a Cell match oh. ends in a fucking no contest. It's the same shit. Yeah, that, that was planned. Oh, yeah, that was planned. Yes, that was planned. Which is worse? Which is worse to you? That was actually intentionally, you know, someone, someone read a script there and said, you know what, guys, go out there and do that ending. That sounds, a right. That sounds about right. Yep. This was, this was beyond their control. So up. which one is yeah. worse to you? Yep. A mistake or you sat down and wrote it and said, <laughs> people will like this. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, all the WWE geeks. Ah, look at AEW, motherfucker. They purposely booked that ending. Yeah. They purposely put Goldberg to pin Bray Wyatt in two minutes. Give me a fucking break. On purpose. Jesus Christ, man. I don't <laughs> listen. It's not Khan's fault. It's not AEW's fault. But the way you handle yourself after the goddamn show is over, man, you got to do better than that. Stop being a fucking mark and just be a goddamn boss. Really? The thing I don't I don't get. I mean, they they are always the ones to, you know, break that fourth wall and the and the be up front because they know uh especially their fan base they're they're in on it it would have i mean rather than go through all of these gymnastics or trying to explain it it would have been much easier just to come out and say oops it went bad it wouldn't it wasn't supposed to go that way you know i would have had i would have had uh 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 kitty come out and say hey look you lucky that the, the pyro team messed it up because i was gonna blow both of you the hell up you know what i mean so whatever it didn't happen that's fine you know, I mean, I don't know what the fuck, you know, Kingston was talking about. He, he had a panic attack or some shit. And they just went through the, all of these fucking gymnastics about what the f It was just so cool. All they did, Jesse, all they did was, you know, it died down from Sunday, right? And all they did tonight on two separate occasions was just kind of reignite all that fucking bullshit that was being said on Sunday night. I'm like, drop this shit already. Just move on. Yeah, yeah, we get it. it, it you know, it... it Mistakes happen. We laughed at you for it. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, <laughs> let's fucking move on. I mean, the bot, the botch does not change any storyline. I mean, yeah, Eddie looks silly. He's laying down there, but the the ridiculous story you told us doesn't make it make any sense. Plus, we all know what actually happened. So why are you doing all of this? Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's that's the overall gist of the situation. Uh, that happened well after. AEW Revolution was off the air. And those were the explanations that Tony Khan gave everybody. And we're going to go over what they did exactly here tonight on the show as well. Quick shout out to my boy, Jeffrey. He just literally donated $200 to the Streamlabs PayPal. Unbelievable. Jeffrey, thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate it. He's a big fan of the show. Uh, he's wow. actually texting me right now. So, um, it's just awesome, man. Shit like that just blows me away because it's it, it just comes out of left field. But, Jeffrey, thank you so much, brother. I'll hit you up after the show, man. Anyway, guys, let's get into the Dynamite show that was tonight. Top of the hour at 8 p.m. We saw Matt Jackson with Nick against Ray Phoenix and Pac. You know, Jesse, uh, I, have to be, I have to be honest with you. A lot of people ask me, you know, J.D., who's the best wrestler in the world right now? It's easy to say Kenny Omega. It's easy to say uh, Kazuchika Okada if you guys are big into New Japan. It's easy to say an AJ Styles. Everybody loves AJ Styles. Roman Reigns is even up there, too, with the story that he tells in the ring. It's just fucking superb. But when people start mentioning best in the world, man, I swear to God, by the end of the year, if not already, uh, Ray Phoenix is going to be in a lot of people's mouths. I I'm getting that feeling about Ray Phoenix, man, you know, Discussion about best pro wrestler in the world right now. Ray Phoenix has to be up there in discussion. No question. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. He, he, nobody has to sit and try to explain why Ray no. Phoenix is so amazing. <laughs> I, no. mean, just, I mean, if you don't know who Ray Phoenix is, you need to go find out. If you know who he is, then there's nothing else to say to, to about that. I mean, what do you want me to say? Guys, it's just fucking great. He's fucking amazing. He, if, you, if you say you think he's the best in the world and you don't want to hear what anybody has to say, okay. Yeah. That's, a, that's an extremely respectable opinion. I, you know, even if I don't agree with it, that's a very respectable opinion. The guy is fucking amazing. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, really knowledgeable in wrestling around the world because I mean, I focus mainly on AEW, NXT, WWE. You know what was going on here in the states. Uh, I'm, I'm a noob when it comes to, you know, other promotions around the world, overseas. But what I see here in the United States, out of all the promotions and all the wrestlers that populate North America, Ray Phoenix, there's nobody doing what he's doing. He stands above everybody else as truly original, and he is, he, he could absolutely be, you know, if, if AEW books him correctly, he could be greater than Rey Mysterio. Oh, yeah, he's, I mean, he's already better than Rey Mysterio. Well, he's, 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 I don't think, I don't know if he'll ever be as you know he might he might know. not have the accolades as Rey Mysterio but yeah you know. yeah I mean I don't I don't know if he'll be I don't want to say I, I he won't be as much of a household name as no. Rey Mysterio you know some you know how about that but as far as in ring work and everything else he's far surpassed Rey Mysterio and everything and and that's not a knock on Mysterio that's just how great Phoenix is yeah yeah that's it's just crazy how good he is okay. and, and listen I'm not taking anything away from Matt Jackson either we're praising Ray Phoenix here Matt Jackson is you know, a great wrestler in his own right. Both both the Jackson guys are, are are great wrestlers in their own right. But you know, I always wondered, and, and I and I should have asked Ortiz or Santana this when they were on critiques and connoisseurs. It just passed my mind because I was just enjoying the discussion with both of those guys so much. I, I wonder how difficult it is for guys like Matt, Nick, Ortiz, Santana when they when they go into a singles match, how different it is and how how they have to switch up their game wrestling singles compared to a tag team. Seems like Matt Jackson's got it down fucking you know, down to a T. So it's like he's not even missing Nick the way he wrestles. It's, it's fucking great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, but don't. So he's in a match with somebody he's been in the ring with, you know, 40,000 times. You know, they know each other. So they, I mean, <laughs> very, very true. Very true. Match? Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, and, and I, that's what I put that. This match was, this match was fucking great, man. Yeah, <laughs> really, this, really this, was. this was, this was really awesome. This, I even <laughs> tweeted, this is exactly what AEW is about this right here. This is the essence of AEW. Um, we, we were about 20 minutes into this thing. I'm going to take it at the halfway point because there was just so much that happened here. But yeah. uh, around halfway through, we got Ray uh, catching Matt all of a sudden with a cutter. And they were both down. They were both slow to get up. Matt came back with a destroyer. A couple of sequences later, Pack. Gave Phoenix a pep talk on the outside because Pac was there with Ray Phoenix. They make up the death triangle. They're getting the next shot at the tag team titles. Phoenix popped up. He was on the outside, beat the count by a nine. He was obviously pay- playing possum and giving himself a breather before getting back in the ring. Matt then landed a flying elbow off the top. Very pretty looking flying elbow. Tony Schiavone even shouted out Randy Savage, calling it Randy Savage-like. Uh, Matt was upset that it only got a two and a half he then applied a sharpshooter. Phoenix went low for a drop kick. Matt moved out of the way. Phoenix's feet connected with Nick at ringside, so Nick inadvertently was standing in the wrong place at the wrong time. He got missile drop kick through the ropes. Matt slid to ringside, and he seen Pac walking over to Nick, so he delivered a super kick with a uh, thigh slap. So another fine there for Mr. Matt Jackson. Not really, but I'm just poking fun at WWE for their outlandish rules. But uh, he got super kicked on the outside by Matt. So Phoenix is in the ring. He's in the ring, and he's pointing for Matt to get in the ring. Let's do this like men. So Matt and Phoenix exchange mid-ring strikes. Matt flipped out of Phoenix's uh, crazy offense, super kicked him. Uh, he, I believe he did a kip, kip up and then into a inziguri, and then they both doubled down with kicks. It was crazy. Phoenix kipped up, like I said, after a second super kick and then drop kick Matt. Both went down, slow to get up. It was about 15 minutes into this thing. They counted each other. Phoenix ended up hitting a leaping tombstone pile driver for the win. Uh, This is awesome. And Jesse, if this is any indication about what's going to happen with this tag team title match, Jesus Jesus Christ, take my money, bro. Seriously. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, it it, it, it is going to be great. I mean, two things to look for here now is, of course, now we got to get, you know, Pac and Nick. Yeah. It's... I mean, now, hey, listen just, again, it's, again, it's, it's, it's solo match between those guys. Take my money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but at the same time, I mean, we know what well, we don't know, but I don't think that they're gonna they're gonna have you know Death Triangle win both. 
So they're probably going to split. So it looks like Nick's going to win. And like we talked about earlier, I mean, now that we know the winners are going to face SCU, I don't. I don't well, see wait anybody. a minute, wait a minute. Well, why, 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 why would you think Nick has to win? I mean, the, the Bucks at this point are fucking bulletproof. Like, if they lose singles matches, what, what, what difference does it make? They're ultimately going to win that match with Pac and Ray Phoenix anyway, so you might as well give Pac and Ray Phoenix solo wins here. They're already get getting the title. They're already good. getting the title shot. It's not like they're beating the young Bucks in singles matches to ultimately get the title shot. They already earned the title shot by winning the, the battle royal. It's not like some fucking bullshit WWE tag team bullshit. Let me get let me let me so let me get this straight. I, I want I need everybody to clip this. All right, clip this. All right, start right about now. Yes, champions are losing on television. I get it. You want the fucking champions to lose? Well, they already fu- they already started it tonight. You want them to lose more? Listen, I don't really advocate for it. Okay, you everybody knows I don't advocate for it. But when you're as bulletproof as the Bucks, it's uh, it, I, I don't see a big deal. It's not as big of a deal as uh, the Hurt Business losing. Seriously. Or the Street Profits losing to fucking Root and Ziggler. For them to get a tag team title and then lose the titles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You want champions to lose. I get it. I'm I'm Take Listen, note. Edgar, Edgar, get this, get this clown out of here, man. I'm going to make you the fucking new co-host of the show, okay? <laughs> Edgar Estrada is the new co-host of Off the Script on Wednesdays, okay? This fucking guy. Champions win too much on TV. You're right, man. No, no, I mean, but yeah, I don't see, I don't see them. All right, so let me, let me, let me call, let me call Tony Khan. Bro, listen, boss man, why did, uh, why didn't Matt Jackson lose tonight? He's half of the tag team champions. Why? This is his fucking problem. He already started it. A lot of Bucks probably booked themselves this way, man. The EVPs. Well, listen, who am I to, who am I to go against creative? Hey, man, it, look, I don't... The thing is, here's the thing, but the messed up part is I put down Phoenix got the win, and it was much needed. Why? Because Phoenix has been losing too much. They keep saying how he has great matches. The only thing he wins are, are, are fucking his jobber matches. So he needed the win, but... He's you don't think in the champion. So let me get this straight. You you don't think Pac needs a win? The Bucks have been on TV all pandemic. Pac has been missing for about a year. Yeah, you don't think he needs a win? Pac's, Pac's not a champion. He's not a he champion. He's not he going to be a booked, champion yet shouldn't anyway. Shouldn't have booked the match. Yet anyway. Shouldn't have booked the match. We I know. Listen, clown. Listen, weeks, clown. Three weeks going into the damn Listen, match, man, clown. This is not what I wanted out of the paper. <laughs> this is what we complained about this. They shouldn't have won the Battle Royal. Should have been Santana and Ortiz. And when they got eliminated, I'm like, Jurassic Express got to win this thing. Jurassic Express. Again. Yo, Tony, what's going on here, bro? Tony the Tiger. The fuck you and doing? Then, and then they come the champions losing. Right away, one loss. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, next week. If they if if they have them lose again, I mean it's just that's just laying it out. But then do we get swerved? I mean, do the Bucks lose again? Or the, does does Nick lose next week? And then does a dark um dark death triangle win the championships? What happens next week when Moxley and Kingston wrestle the good brothers? Are they gonna beat the good brothers? Hmm. Yeah, probably, man. I Moxley guess that don't matter because uh, impact uh, tag team champions don't matter they're, to Tony Khan, right? They're, 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 they're impact champions. Yeah, well. they're, they're not uh, Moxley can't fucking lose. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, Moxley listen. loses to nobody except the the, the, the number one guys. So if he's gonna lose, it better lose to fucking Kenny, and that's it. Listen, I don't mind it. Normally, everybody knows I hate champions losing. That happens on WWE TV, TV all too often. This doesn't really happen on AWTV, TV, so I'm a little bit more understanding of it. I still hate it. Jesse's not wrong. It's not right. But they already committed themselves here. So I would assume the Bucks are bulletproof. Pac should get the win over Nick in a very, you know, good wrestling match. And then the Bucks just went get the win in a very good tag team match. And then we move on to SCU. It's not that big of a deal to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm still in the belief that the Bucks are all about putting over other tag teams. Um, they did get a lot of pressure from, you know, everybody about them not being the champions and not being the top of the division. So they had to make that move, get up there. And they are now still in the position to put other teams over. So, and that's what they're going to do. 
I'm pretty sure by the end of this death triangle will come out looking better than they did when they went in. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait for this. Going to be good stuff between uh, the Bucks and the death triangle. When that happens, we don't know yet when that will be, but it's going to happen soon, and I can't wait. Moving on to John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. Jesse, they were sitting in front of a fire pit, and Moxley seemed to be dealing with the ramifications of the death match. And I don't know what screwball. Well, well, I don't know what he was drinking, but I wish I could be there in between them getting uh, stuff for the C and C for sure. So Moxley was uh, drinking whiskey, I'm sure, with Kingston. He was dealing with his injuries as Kingston talked about the heat that he felt in the ring on Sunday night. What heat? I don't know. He yelled and he asked Kenny Omega, you know, about what happened on Sunday night. And Moxley said he thinks Omega really wanted to blow them up. Mox said Impact paid for the bomb. He asked if the bomb came in a box marked Acme. And I made more explosive volcanoes in fourth grade science class. What the hell was that? He said Omega was the better man and kept the title, but I did get a drinking buddy back. He said he could have come out a little earlier, though. Eddie and Mox talked over each other. And it came off very comedic. They were very buddy-buddy here. Mark says he's glad he didn't get blown up, but he would have liked to see a bomb go off. He said, if you're going to flash a weapon, you better use it. They both looked at each other, and they chugged their whiskey as the segment came to a close. So, seems like, Jesse, AEW is still leaning on Omega and Don Callis building a dud bomb in this uh, gimmick bullshit that came from Sunday, uh, a way for them to kind of cover up the the dud, the failure that was the explosive at the end of that match. You know, I know you and I talked about it, man. I, I don't really understand why we needed, and, and and this is even more prevalent now. And I, I, don't, I haven't listened to anybody else, so I, I don't really care what anybody else has stated. I know we said it uh, on Sunday night after the show was over, and that's all that matters to me. Why the fuck was there an explosive set to go off after the goddamn match was over. I mean, does anybody think about that? I mean, is that an official ruling? Like, why does that need to happen? If there was a time limit and the match was still going, then I get the ring being blown up. But Omega already had pinned Moxie. What the fuck is the need for the ring to be blown up? They would have saved themselves all the embarrassment in the world if they just did not do that. It was, that was my whole logic gap deal to it. They, they, they could have saved themselves a lot of, a lot, themselves a lot of anguish. I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar with the uh, exploding barbed wire death match, you know, from the old school days. I don't know if the ring was supposed to explode at the end of it, but even if you took the way that it was done back in the day and brought it to current standards of 2021, they went through and started telling us how they had fire marshals on hand and doing this and doing that. I bet they didn't have fire marshals on hand back in the 80s when they did this shit. But bringing the 2021 standards, you need to have that safety barrier in place. So now that we're talking fucking safety barriers, why would you still have the bomb ticking after the uh, match? You uh, have no uh, kill switch. Uh, apparently people in the chat are saying it is an official rule. Maybe it, it, it is. It's an official That's fine. rule. Maybe, maybe, like I said, even if it is, you have to bring it to 2021 standards. So why would you still have it go off after the match was over? I could see the arguments in both. There's going to be some traditionalists that want the same thing, and they want to they want the match to be kept intact. And and there are people that have Jesse's argument as well. And I'm with Jesse on this. I don't know why we couldn't adjust this thing to fit 2021. War Games yeah. was adjusted to fit into the modern day. It's not the same War Games that we seen back in the day during WCW days. I mean, everything yeah. changes. So why why didn't they change this to save themselves potential disaster? Not even the fact that you know it, it possibly couldn't even be tested. You, you can't have something explode and then, you know, you put it back in a fucking box and have, do it all over again. You, you get one they shot said, at these things. They said they, they said they did test it. Well, they tested it. It, well, it, it, it worked. It must have worked. But, but they probably had a setup of mortars. You, you light them off and you, you know, you set them off and you reload the mortar and you do it when you go live. But the, if the if the mechanic of the, if the system went down, nothing you can do. It's fucking live TV. Duds happen. You know, at the end it, of the day, it, it's fucking stupid. It, it was very stupid. It was, again, so like they say, it was a part of the old match back in. I bet they didn't have concussion doctors or 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 cut specialists and everything on fire department back on hand in the old days, but they had them there this time because you have to modernize it. So, yeah. well, anyway, never mind that. 
What do you think about Moxley and Kingston being asked or given the task to make this right? I mean, if there's anybody in the fucking company that I'm going to give a microphone to to make things right, and, and thankfully he was a part of the fucking plan at the end. God forbid he wasn't even a part of the plan. You know, e e either if he wasn't a part of the plan, you know, you got Kingston out there, thankfully, to try and come up with an explanation. There's no better guy in the company to give a microphone to for people to believe in because Eddie Kingston's just fucking great on the microphone. And then you got John Moxley, who I, I don't know who could be mad at John Moxley. You know, who, no. who, who who's not going to forgive John Moxley in that instance? He even came out after the end of the match and, you know, bitched and complained to the to the crowd. Like, this is fucking stupid. It's fucked up. You know? At the same time, to explain to me this. Just how is it just out of the blue, just out of nowhere, Kingston is now 69 and Moxley, like Kenny says, and uh, Butcher and the Blade are just now just hired by fucking Matt Hardy. I mean, what what happened? To, what happened to the crew? Well, I'm not there yet. Why are you jumping ahead? Because it happened. We're talking about fucking Kingston. What I'm not to there yet. I'm going in order over here. What are you doing? Jumping ahead. Uh. Fuck, Don't listen to the chat. What is Edgar getting on your nerves? Who's Edgar? Yeah, exactly. Who's Edgar? Edgar's my Who? fucking security no. guard, clown. Fucking mini me security guard. Who'd you hire? Hornswoggle? What the fuck? The moving guy? on. Moving on. I, I think Mo uh, Moxley and Kingston were were they they tried. I I'll give them credit. They tried, and anything that they're gonna project back at us. Listen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be willing to listen at all times. So uh, they gave it a good effort, even though if the fans are still disappointed. Listen, you got to give them some credit for trying to make it right from Sunday night. Jesse, we got Cody Rhodes versus Seth, not Seth Rollins, Seth Gargis. This was a complete fucking squash match. The match wasn't even needed. I don't know why this was happening. I think you told me the same thing. Cody wins in one minute, figure four leg lock. That's not even what we're here to talk about. Cody wins in one minute with the figure four. Shivani gets into the ring to interview Cody Rhodes. And Shivani's mic didn't work. Cody got him a replacement. Shivani asked how his shoulder is doing after Shaq threw him around last week. He was then interrupted quickly by Pentagon Jr. And he had a translator. I don't know this guy's name, but he was just hired on as a backstage interviewer. One of the male interviewers for AEW. He's got a new position there. I don't know his name, so... I apologize to everybody listening to me, but he's the new Spanish, uh, uh, I guess, interview backstage in AEW. Alex Marvez? No, not Alex Marvez. Oh, Some other guy. Okay. He, he speaks fluent Spanish. So he was okay. interrupted by Pentagon was Cody. He had this guy with him. And Penta said if Cody calls himself the prince of pro wrestling, then he is the lord of Lucha Libre. And Penta said if... Uh, he lost. He said at Revolution, he lost. He said if it was just them one-on-one, -on -one, he still would have lost. So then his translator said he's lucky he didn't focus on hurting his arm even more to the point he wouldn't have been able to pick up his newborn baby daughter. So Cody was very angry by this. He ran out of the ring like a fucking bat out of hell. He jumped the barricade. Cody was brawling with Penta in the crowd. It was a bunch of wrestlers and officials that broke them up. This was awesome. And the one thing, Jesse, I want to pinpoint here, and I mentioned it on social media, and many agree with me about this, this statement. This, to me, was excellent. Cody didn't even have to say anything because Pentagon was there with the translator, and Pentagon looked the part. He was in a suit. He, was, he had his mask on. He looked fucking legit. He legitimately looked like the fucking Lord of the Luchadors out there. But with, with Pentagon, you know, he was speaking broken English, and then he was translating back and forth. But when Pentagon was speaking English, he came off so much better. And he's got very broken English. You understand him, but he's got very broken English. Jesse, this came off better to me. Every time that we heard Andrade speak, it never resonated with the crowd. But when Pentagon spoke here... It fucking felt right. It resonated. It felt organic. It felt natural. And this right here is the, the fucking comparisons between WWE and AEW. AEW, Tony Khan let Pentagon go out there and be Pentagon. 
Knowing that he yeah. doesn't speak English, he's just Pentagon. And that natural charisma is just going to fucking show itself to a point where the promo is going to be like, whatever, he sounds fucking great. But when Andrade is given a script and he doesn't speak English all that well, he's got to memorize and he's got to think about these English words and translate it into Spanish and then kind of project it in English. You know, it, it's so fucking terrible to a point where this is the reason why WWE promos suck. Look at what Andrade does in WWE when he was on TV. Now he's not on TV. He sounded miserable by himself. If this was Andrade in AEW, I would love to see how he projects himself like Pentagon here, man. This is the sheer difference between WWE and AEW right there. Yeah, yeah. Pentagon also has more of a name value for himself yeah, than Andrade absolutely. does, too. I mean, Pent Pentagon is, is is a legit OG veteran amongst the the uh, the indies, man. So he can he can he can bond with any Mark crowd out there because they already they already know who he is. They know what he's about. The guy comes out and says literally the same thing every match, and the crowd eats it up like you know it's breakfast. So Pentagon can do no wrong amongst his fans. Uh, Andrade is still trying to try to get his character over, establish his, his position and everything else. People are still trying to understand where he's coming from. All we know is that the guy's a fucking five star wrestler. That's I mean, he, he is and he, and he and he will be. But anything else about him, he's failed to get himself over. And maybe it could be creative. It could be his language barrier as well. But he just needed to, he just needed assistance. He needed somebody to push him, whether being creative or on screen. And they just stopped caring. Now, let me tell you, let me, let, me, let me say this to you. What happens next week? The match is booked, Pentagon versus Cody. I'm very much looking forward to it. Do you get the sense that Pentagon needs that type of translator in his corner? Maybe, maybe. And Tony Khan's mentioned her before. Oh, I didn't know she was a free agent. I was waiting for her 90 days to be up. I'd love to have a word with her. Do we see Thea Trinidad on AEW television next week? Do we see her standing next to Pentagon and translating for him and become his manager on AEW television. Yeah. Don't you think that now after after this segment even looks like a better idea? That'd be perfect. Even better. Um, just she's just with the Lucha Bros. She can come out with Phoenix as well. Yeah. Let's, let's put her with both of them. I mean, I like how they're doing more singles things because yep. I mean, because they can easily go into the singles division and and be fantastic. But that mouthpiece is missing for the singles division, mm -hmm. and she would be great for it. Yeah, I, I hope that happens. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure we're not the only ones that have thought of that idea. But uh, after this segment, I think it even fits uh, more so now. So we'll see what happens next week. The match is booked between Pentagon Jr. and Cody. Should be a hell of a match. I don't see why Cody needs to win next week. Pentagon is someone who desperately needs a win himself uh, in this, uh, I guess, newly reprised singles role. And it's just great to see how versatile they both are. Both are great together, but Jesus Christ, you got two legit main event guys in both Ray Phoenix and Pentagon on your roster. I'm glad to see this happening. Yeah, and and let me just say this, man. And I've been kind of putting it out there the last couple of weeks, but I'm just full blown steam ahead with. I'm very tired of Babyface Cody. Yeah, I'm, I'm very fucking fed up with Babyface Cody, man. It just. The fact that he, he he just I think he just needs to be healed really bad. I mean, because he he comes off as all EVP and not wrestler. So he, he comes off as well. He's booking himself into these winning situations and shit like this. He's booking himself in his ladder match. He booked himself to come back out and save the ladder match when he got booed on the way listen, out there and shit. Listen, he's going away. He's going away. I'm he's not going away. He's not going away. He's not going away. What are you talking about? When Brandy has uh, their daughter? Uh, He's Brandy's going away. Gonna have, Brandy's going to have that fucking baby in Gorilla, dude. He is not going <laughs> away. They are not going anywhere. Dude. She will have that baby and she'll be backstage the next fucking week. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> and she'll take some time off. Well, isn't he hurt? He, He's got to be hurt. He, he is hurt. And he's still not going away. He might go out of the ring a little bit. Cody will still be sitting there with, in Gorilla next to Tony Khan. Tony, uh, Cody's not going away, man. <laughs> he is not going away. And so he'll he'll take a week or two. A week off is not going away. Cody ain't going away. So, I mean, Brandy will be just fucking fine. She'll be sitting there with Dustin. <laughs> She'll be fine, dude. Cody's not going anywhere. Well, listen, this is awesome. I'm very, I'm very excited about this match next week. Uh, we got that booked. And uh, we'll see if Thea Trinidad shows face in AEW. I think that's a very, very good creative decision if... 
Tony went out and really spoke to her, wants to bring her on in. I think her and Pentagon being paired up would be perfect. Jesse, something yeah. for you to complain about here. I know, uh, I'm not sure if you thought about this because I didn't text you this and you didn't text me about this situation, but I want to get your thoughts on this. Sting comes out to be interviewed by Tony Schiavone talking about Darby Allen taking risks. Now, uh, before I get into what I want to talk about here, I, I got a little piece of information on the street fight with Sting, Darby, Brian Cage, and Ricky Starks. Darby Allen apparently did most of the creative heavy lifting in this AEW street fight. Now, during the AEW Revolution post-media scrum, Tony Khan gave Darby Allen a ton of credit for putting the street fight together. He then said that there are many differences between the two of them, but he knows when Allen has a cool idea. He says this, and I quote, This was the perfect match for Sting. I had been planning this cinematic match for several months from when Sting and I first talked about Sting debuting in AEW in late 2020. When I told Darby about this, he and I started planning it out, and I gave him the basics of it, the finish, and some key stuff. But he really did the heavy lifting on planning shots and the skateboarding thing. He's a great visionary. That's what I always say the great connections in wrestling are when you really see the great creative partnerships. When there's somebody like that who's a great star and is a visionary and is a great star and has a plan, and what I can do as a booker and promoter and TV producer is not just share the resources, but share a vision with him. It's like I'm saying there's not a personal life that I have less in common with than I do with Darby in real life, but I know when he's got something that's cool and he's often got really, really cool ideas and I really like collaborating with him. Tony Khan also praised Sting for really bringing the performance At Revolution, Darby also deserves, obviously, a ton of credit, like Tony Khan said, for coming up with all of his ideas and stunts and the vision behind the street fight. Uh, Did you hear about that at all, Jesse? What do you think about Darby having a lot of the creative mindset that went into that street fight? What did I say in the review? That pretty much that. I literally said this this, this match looks like Darby did it the whole damn thing himself. Yeah. I think my I think my I think my words it looked this 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 looked like it's had Darby's handwriting all over. Yeah. I mean it's because it was it was shot in the same vein that we know because we know when the pandemic hit and everybody everybody was literally at home for a while, Darby was sending in his promos from home and this is how they were shot. Yep. You know, and they looked great. And this is how the match was shot. So I right off the bat, first thing I said in review was that this match looked like it was the, the brainchild of Darby Allen and now now I see that it was. Yeah. That's awesome to see, and uh, I thought it was easily uh, the best match up until the main portion of the exploding barbed wire death match. In, in my eyes, it probably was the best match of the, of the entire night. It was easily the best thing on the show, in my honest opinion, but awesome stuff there between uh, those four guys, and they deserve a lot of credit. I love the way it was shot. But, Jesse, we got Darby being talked about here by Sting. He said, uh, this makes him a very dangerous man after Sunday. He bragged about winning on Sunday. He was, thankfully, uh, according to some people, because Sting always usually talks in the same the same vein about Darby, and we just want to move on from this. And then he was stopped by Lance Archer and Jake the Snake Roberts. Archer said if they aren't given any time, they're going to take TV time. Archer said he didn't need a ladder match victory to be the face of the revolution. He said, if things don't change, he'll be taking much more than just time. Shivani said, listen, this is Sting's time to talk. Archer then sarcastically apologized to Tony Shivani and Sting, and he just left. And then Sting thanked Tony Shivani and just left the stage. Now, I, I don't know what this means for Lance Archer. He was clearly on a trajectory to be a babyface with Jake the Snake Roberts. And now all of a sudden, Jesse, it seems that he may be turning back into a heel with this type of behavior. I don't get the logic in the booking there. I love this part by Lance Archer. And and probably just for that reason, I was getting ready to say this was not very baby face, Mm-mm. baby face like. And I love this segment. He didn't need Jake. He came out, said what he had to say, looks thing in the eye and he fucking walked away. And he seemed like a little bit of a dick. And especially since he came out during Sting's time for no announced reason, this is what I was saying. I mean, Lance Archer is, he is not working for me as a babyface or as a tweener. He just needs to be an asshole that kills. Simple. 
Yeah. That's it. Yeah, we'll see, man. I Listen, Lance Archer, I was getting used to Lance Archer being a babyface. He's obviously a much better heel to me because he just projects that, that heel behavior. And then obviously Jake meshes well with the heel behavior as well. I just kind of, I'm like you, I, I just, I'm very indifferent with him being a babyface. But yeah. I don't know if this is leading to Lance versus Sting. I don't know where this goes. Clearly, we're done with the Team Taz Sting sh- uh, situation. Hopefully. Thank God. Hopefully. But uh, Lance Archer here. Uh, still, we don't know what's going on here, but we will find out in the weeks to come. Lance Archer projecting some heel tendencies on Sting. Whether that leads to a match, we will find out sooner rather than later. We got the next part of the show here, man. Ethan Page, all ego. Ethan Page versus somebody that Jesse has constantly berated and put down. He said he's not that good of a performer. He said he needs to go back to the gym and start training better. Very green in the ring. Somebody that has uh, ability, but not going to reach that that level. Lee Johnson, right? You said that about Lee Johnson to me. Correct? Hello? If I don't say shit, Lee Johnson will not think that I said that shit. Listen, man. I did not say any of that Listen. shit. Oh, I, I, I didn't say it. I'm checking to see right now if Lee Johnson fucking... Listen, man, I didn't it. say that about Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson's my guy, man. See if I'm blocked yet. I don't know. Whatever. Come on. Well, Come Jesse's on, trying to find out if he's blocked by Lee Johnson. All Ethan Eagle Page versus Lee Johnson, man. I, I was... Wanting to see this match and really kind of see what Ethan Page was about as a new signing for AEW. But thankfully, I wasn't the only one that got this sound issue with Dynamite tonight. We got an interview before the match took place with QT Marshall. And then Lee Johnson was there. Uh, Dasha interviewed them. She asked about Marshall walking out on Dustin Rhodes, a revolution. Marshall said he's human. He let the emotions get the best of him. And then we heard this, this noisy background. I was hearing like what, what looked to be a basketball game in the background. I, I, I heard the PA defense, defense chant. And I heard uh, some buzzer sounds going off in the back. I heard some basketball commentary going on in the back. I'm like, all right, I don't know what's going on here. And then Ethan Page made his way to the ring. And I still heard it, and I'm like, is this part of Ethan Page's intro and music? I, what the fuck's going on here? And then the match happened with Lee Johnson, and it did not go away. I'm like, all right, something's wrong here. So I tweeted on social media, tweeted on Twitter, and everybody blew up my Twitter. Yeah, man, I'm getting the same problem. They went to commercial break. Clearly, it was a TNT issue. We get back from commercial break. I'm still hearing the defense, defense. I'm like, thanks for ruining the fucking match, man. TNT with an amateurish move. This is real. This is shit that should not be happening. I don't know who was behind the desk, but my God, man, you got the same shit, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I checked. I checked Twitter too, and my God, it happened to everybody. Everybody except the people watching on Fight TV. So that's how we knew it was a TNT issue. And then Tony Khan came out and confirmed it himself. Was there a basketball game on TBS? No, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there was a game on yeah. somewhere. Well, something, somebody was playing something into the fucking microphone. I don't know what the hell was going on. Yeah. Anyway, sure. it, it ruined. It legitimately ruined the match. I swear to God, I thought I was thinking about switching over to NXT because I couldn't take it anymore. But Ethan Page wins with his ego's edge. It's his version of the Razor's Edge. Page wins in eight minutes. Uh, I'm not really feeling Ethan Page yet. There's nothing about him that really sticks out. I'm just hey kind of thought it was just me. No, I'm, I, he's missing. He's <laughs> missing something. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm just so used to him being with Josh Alexander in, in the North. I mean, the North is fucking awesome. They gelled so great. Listen, they could both be singles guys. I don't want to take that away from them. But I mean, I, I hope to God that when Josh Alexander is done with impact, that he comes on over and we get the reformation of the North. Some guys are just better in tag teams. And I just feel like that's going to be the same way with Ethan Page. I'm not familiar with him, and I mean, but I can I can you know sense and see the hype around him. So my take on it is he'll be fine in time. He just gotta you know get his feet wet, settle in, um, find out what he's gonna do here. He'll be fine. 
I saw somebody ask if Kevin Dunn was in TNT production. Kevin Dunn would never stand for a botch like that. Are oh you my fucking god, crazy? man! You can't, I don't think Kevin Dunn could is, is even capable of a fucking botch yes, like that. Yes, Holy you shit! Rip on Kevin Dunn, all you everybody can rip on Kevin Dunn. They want Kevin Dunn is the <laughs> best in the fucking business. <laughs> <laughs> These amateurs okay. over in AEW. W yes. stands for wood. Kevin Dunn would have went fucking that shit crazy back there. This shit happened. <laughs> You've been kicking down fucking door, knocking over the fucking production truck. That <laughs> shit don't happen on his watch. Hey, listen, man, if that was Vince McMahon, somebody would have been fucking fired the second that shit went Ooh. off. Oh, oh my God, man. man. This guy was upset with a fucking Adam Pierce microphone going out, man. Can you imagine that? Are you fucking nuts, that guy. Man. Well, listen, it's not He's even. It's listen. I'm not shitting on AEW for it. It's not there. It's not Tony Khan's fault. It's not AEW's fault. It's clearly a TNT an issue. Uh, but th th this is the clear separation between the, the production quality of WWE and AEW. WWE is top notch. Th I think they're too good, you know, to a yeah. point where it looks fucking fake. But this yeah. is the 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 difference between the production and the two. It, it just comes off as amateurish on AEW's part. <laughs> You know, yeah, I've, I've I've always said that for years, and it's it's, it's it kind of sucks to have to watch a company that just drives you fucking nuts creatively, but then have to put them over when they do something right. Nobody does promo packages, documentaries. Nobody does this shit better than Kevin Dunn's team over in WWE. No, nobody. nobody, nobody. Page wins. Yeah. Page wins in eight minutes, and uh, we will clearly be seeing more of Ethan Page. All ego, Ethan Page. Alex Marvez stood outside. Uh, it looks like it was outside the Jacksonville Stadium there with Adam Hangman Page. He asked Page what he's doing with the money he won at Revolution, Matt Hardy's money. He's sitting on a new lawnmower, was Adam Page. Uh, clearly, he was uh, about to cut Kevin Dunn's lawn and uh, fix up his front yard. He said he bought whiskey, vinyl albums, and donated a bunch of money to local kids' education charities. So the Dark Order then showed up and... Obviously, uh, Johnny Hungy there asked for a ride. He's like, can we get on? Can we get on? We Give us a ride. And then he obviously sat shotgun there with Paige and all the rest of the Dark Order kind of jumped on the lawnmower. They almost tipped this fucking thing over. Then Alan Angels wanted to get on. And uh, the Dark Order said, no, 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 no. There's no room here. There's a weight limit. There's a weight capacity here. They drove off without him. He waved goodbye. But uh, he was left in the dust. Poor uh, Alan Angels there. So Paige... Does he still fit in the Dark Order, Jesse, or is this just going to be uh, a lingering thing? And I know, and you know, you know, I talked about him. Maybe he's leading the new Four Horsemen. Maybe he fits into there. It, you still see him in the Dark Order. It it almost makes too much sense now. Yeah, you know, I mean, it 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 made sense to just do it a while ago. But now they've just been sitting around playing footsies with each other. Now it looks like we need to get a swerve or something like that. Because now him just showing up, that is, he, right now it feels like he's already in. Yeah. It feels like he's already in. There's no animosity. There's no tension. He's not tired of them. He's not trying to get away from them. He's on BTE in their little room every week. He's a part of them at this point for all, you know, for all intents and purposes. So... Yeah, now I'm expecting some kind of a some kind of a turn on someone's part, whether it be the Dark Orders or Hangman's. I don't know. Yeah, and we'll see, man. Page seems to be to me still floating in that uh, that mid card, not really relevant. But uh, you know, everybody's going to see their time in the sun. This is just his uh, his his bench time. You know, he's he's yeah. doing he's doing whatever he's got to do to remain on television. But he he will be where where we expect him to be. You know, at the end of the year, I'm presuming, or early 2022. Yeah. Next, we got the big story of the night here, uh, minus the Pentagon Cody stuff and obviously the Jericho stuff, which we'll talk about at the end with MJF. This was the other big story here. Christian Cage, and he was about to come out onto the stage to speak with Tony Schiavone. Schiavone really hyped him up. He's one of the greatest competitors of all time. I don't know if I'd go that far, but he's a, a good hand. Christian Cage is. Shivani was then interrupted by Omega's women, the cleaner women. And Shivani asked if they're a part of Christian's entrance. No, clown. Obviously, you've seen the cleaner women before. Oh, are they a part of Christian's entrance? Unless, uh, unless Christian Cage is fucking sweeping uh, his uh, WWE contract up. I don't know what the fuck he's doing out there with, with ladies, with brooms. So Shivani acted like a dummy, and Omega then comes out smiling with the world title. 
stealing Christian spotlight. Don Callis and the good brothers are there. They joined Omega on the stage. They head to the ring. Callis takes the microphone, he apologized, and said that they won't get to hear from the brand new signee in AEW. We call the shots around here and we take what we want, then we take a little more, he said. He said he is standing next to the greatest wrestler who has ever lived and the new king of the death match, Kenny Omega. So Callis then says on Sunday, it all went according to plan. Omega said, maybe not everything, Mr. Callis. Callis says, oh, you must be talking about the explosion not heard around the world. He said they've taken a lot of heat in recent days. A lot of heat, he says. The wrong kind of heat, I would say. By the company and by the fans for the Sparkler show. He said he will neither confirm nor deny that they had anything to do with it. But they will confirm that it made them happy to take away what they wanted. He said, Tony Khan likes to make great memories. He said they took that away on Sunday. They took away Moxley's chance to die a hero or Kingston's star-making heroic moment. He said it was a win-win situation for them. He said if the explosives went off, Moxley would have been gone and Kingston would have been maimed. But if the ring didn't blow up, they win even bigger because Moxley and Kingston look like a pair of idiots and we walk out with the world title. And then they ended up bragging about winning. So, again, Jesse, I'm going to stop here. They, they, they spent... Overly too much time talking about the failure that was the Dud explosion on, on Sunday night. I, I I got what Kingston and Moxley said earlier. You know, Don Callis obviously is explaining his side of it in his sniveling heel prick way. But I, I think at this point, and I, and I know you agree, it, it was a little too much. And it even further put the exclamation point on it all, like, just fucking move on already, man. You, you're just making yourselves look like a bunch of idiots. Really. It, it is. It, it just it just seems like it's it's just... You just want it to go away. All they had to say was, <laughs> listen, it didn't go like we wanted. We're going to move yeah. on, and we're going to fucking uh, come up with the next idea or the next plan. Yeah, it feels like they'll be coming out here next week still trying to... And also, we forgot about this part where it had some shoddy thing. Look, dude, it just it didn't go the way you wanted. No. That's it. No, the, That's uh, it. of all the fucking fan bases, you got the AEW fan base. They're not idiots. They know it. The fans know that they're not idiots. Like, you should not be having this much time to explain something that clearly was a fuck up. The fans are not going to buy into your bullshit, man. These are the smartest marks on the planet watching this product. They know. Yeah. We know you messed up. It's fine. You know, nobody's going to crucify you for making a mistake. You know, whoever made the mistake. But geez, man, these these excuses are so convoluted. They just make no sense. Now, come on. So Omega standing there, he said he got goosebumps thinking about seeing Moxley vaporized in the middle of the ring and the fact that he never had to see him again, he said it was just as sweet to, to have the everlasting memory of him leaving in the middle of the ring looking like a loser. He said they didn't account for Kingston, his childhood friend, dry humping him as sparklers were shot off. Kingston then came out to the ring, yet enough of this bullshit from Callus and Omega. Callus was then digging into Eddie Kingston, said he had him on Impact Wrestling working for him because he saw his talent and potential. He said Kingston, though, always finds a way to screw things up when things are looking up for him. He said he had a moment in his in his grasp on Sunday, did Kingston, and we, we took it away. So Callus and everybody there, Omega and the Good Brothers, you know, they were all concerned for him. They said they were giving him to the count of 10. If you don't leave the ring, we're going to kick your ass. So... We got the big countdown clock, like we've seen at the pay-per-view with the fucking annoying buzzer and the sound effect going off, the horn, the siren, whatever the fuck it was. So we had to see that all over again. Another another uh, visual that we should be forgetting about, but it's there on Dynamite again. So we got that counting down, and Omega and Callus, they fell down jokingly in the middle of the ring. The clock went to zero. So Callus jumps on Omega, imitating Kingston jumping on Moxley Sunday, and Omega with the microphone is screaming, 69 me, Don! 69 me! Did I blow up yet? I'm almost passed out! So we got Kenny Omega on live television <laughs> telling Don Callis to 69 him. 
You need to make that a t-shirt right fucking oh, Are now. you kidding me? I should, <laughs> by the time you said this, it's probably a fucking t-shirt. Tomorrow morning, I guarantee you, it'll be on an AEW shop. 69 me, Don, he says. So Omega says he doesn't have the guts he gets in Kingston's face to punch me in the face. I'll even give you the first one free. So obviously Kingston looked into the camera, shrugged his shoulders, punched him right in the fucking face. Omega went down and... Obviously, there was a big brawl between these guys. Moxley ran out for the save. And they were brawling all around ringside. Christian's music played. And he walks out to the stage. He looked around. He's looking for the one fucking fan that gives a shit about him being an AEW. Christian Cage. So he gets into the ring. He eyed Omega. Excalibur's hyping this up. He says, can you believe Christian Cage and Kenny Omega are on your screen? No, Excalibur, I don't. I don't give a shit. They had to stare down in the middle of the ring and they exchanged some words off microphone. Omega offered a handshake sarcastically and then he went for a punch. Christian ducked, set up for the unprettier. Callus yanked Omega underneath the bottom rope and that's the way the segment went off the air. Even we had... Mr. Christian Cage pick up the AEW title, teasing a fucking program already with Omega, and he hasn't even had a match yet in AEW. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting, folks. This shit sucks, and I'm going to tell you why. Because it happened in AEW, everybody's expecting, oh, JD's not going to shit on this. JD's not going to shit on his precious AEW. Let me tell you something, you AEW fucking shills and you AEW haters expecting me to fucking praise this shit because it's not happening on WWE programming. This shit sucks. This is protocol. WWE booking 101. Okay? And I'm going to tell you why this sucks. Number one, Christian hasn't had a fucking match, a legit match, in God knows how long. You're going to bring in a 47-year-old to feud with Kenny Omega, your world champion, Ryan, who's the number two heel in the entire industry right now under Roman Reigns. You're going to have him feud with Kenny Omega because he's the new guy in town. He's the ex-WWE star. Why is that Why is that happening, Mr. Tony Khan? Oh, that's right. What time is it? What season is it? It's WrestleMania season. Edge is main eventing WrestleMania, whether anybody likes it or not. He'll be there, whether it's with Roman or Daniel Bryan. Edge is in the main event of WrestleMania. You want your own fucking make-believe Edge and Christian on your TV competing for the world title right around the same time that Edge is having his big comeback tour. Edge is probably walking out of WrestleMania with the world title. Hopefully, if it's a triple threat match and Roman doesn't get pinned. But you want your own version of Edge on your programming. This is WWE booking right down to the T, folks. They did it. In WWE with Goldberg and all these fucking guys coming back, these part-timers getting title shots that don't make sense. And now you expect me to fucking sit here and open up because it's AEW? No, I'm not going to do that. This is fucking awful. And and people were telling me, hey, man, it's only going to be a one-off. Hey, man, Christian's not going to win the championship. I don't give a fuck if Christian's going to win the championship or just have a match with Omega and lose. He doesn't need it. And I I don't think Omega needs anybody to put him over either. People would tell me, oh, this is just to enhance Kenny Omega even further as a heel. Let me tell you something, you fucking geeks. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something, you fucking (laughs) geeks. This guy is about to win the Impact World Championship and take another company's world title to AEW. (laughs) He doesn't need Christian to put him over. (laughs) He's going to have a whole fucking company coming after him. He's got how many guys on that roster want to get that title back in the honor of Impact Wrestling? You want and you think Christian Cage is going to put over Omega even more? What are you fucking mental? This is WWE happening on Wednesday night. How could you be okay with that? Yeah, rant over, bad. rant over. I don't know, I don't was, know. God, take it, please. I need a drink. This, this, this is fucking bad. It, look, we were promised a real sports-like feel in the AEW. We were promised a ranking system. We were promised numbers and statistics. Can someone please tell me how Christian Cage fits into all of that shit right now? How? I don't know. I I guess the ranking system doesn't matter, right? Who's number one? (laughs) What what happens to the ranking system, Mr. Tony Khan? Huh? Ranking system. He come back, number one. That's your ranking system. That, that, that. 
I gotta say, this is the most depressing piece of booking I've ever seen come out of AEW. It it, it really, really is. And I'm, I'm not trying to make a joke or nothing like that. It's really depressing because it was stuff like this that, that gravitated me away from a uh, WWE and on the AEW more. Because just the little things, just the little things like this, part timers coming in. I will. That's why he's trying to make it clear. I'm not a part timer. I signed a full time deal. You fucking idiot. It's not the point. The point is you're a 47 year old retired wrestler coming in and thrusting yourself into the main event with the one of the probably the number two guy in the entire wrestling industry right now. Why? Why? I mean, if it was one thing, he's going to be coming on and doing what Sting is doing, or doing some mid-card things, helping backstage. He's here, and he's in the main event with Kenny Omega already. Even if this match never happens, why'd you even put him in the ring with Kenny? This already sends the wrong bro, vibe. Bro, I got people in the chat. Sense. I got people in the chat. It's just a tease. It's just a tease. Listen, nobody holds up the AEW title unless yeah. they're going for the title. Yeah. You, you kidding me? Let me tell you how this Christian, listen, let me sense. tell you. Let me, I'm let me, sorry to cut you off, Jack. I'm sorry for the fucking geeks out there that don't comprehend. Christian is only here because he can't be Edge in WWE. He was never going to get this type of spotlight there. Edge is over there doing what Christian wants to do. He can't do that with Edge there, so he went to AEW. What don't you grasp? Yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, do we know that he could still go at 47? I mean, you want to put him in the ring with the fucking best wrestler on the planet. You want to throw him right into the fire? Couldn't start him off with somebody no. on the lower of the uh, spectrum here? No. Even, let, me, let me tell you how even a tease, even, this, even if this was just a tease, how it still made no sense. Because if you thrust him here and put him in a match right away, clearly that part makes no sense. So you tease it. Why? Because you're going to build him up from the bottom? Fine. Say you build Christian Cage up from the bottom. You're going to build this guy up from the bottom and get him all the way to Kenny. How many guys, younger guys, who deserve it more than you just jump over? How many? Because you have a shit ton of talent who could be in a main event role. In, in, in six months, give me six months, I can take a good 85% of the guys in that locker room and make them into a Kenny Omega opponent. But well, you're going to do it with Christian. Bro, not even a look at the entire Impact roster. He's going to beat either Rich Swan or Moose at their next he, pay-per-view for the world title. He he's, go, he's going he's, to have... He's going to be... He's them. going to be two world champions. <laughs> I mean, yes. look at the fucking wrestlers that he's got over there to wrestle. Yes. Another rematch with Moose. I'd like to see that on AEW television. Mm. Uh, Sammy Callahan, yeah. fucking take mm. my money. You talk about death yeah. match. Jesus yeah. fucking, Sammy Callahan could main event any show in any promotion on any day of the week. Yeah. And you want to put no, Christian no, Cage in there. Listen, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with Christian Cage. I have a problem with terrible booking. That's my problem. Yeah. This, look, if you're, if you're in the chat and you don't know this match coming up with Impact McKinney, this is not just a, uh, an Impact title match. This is a title versus title match. So if you think the AEW title is getting dropped by Kenny Omega to show up being held by Moose on Impact, you are a fucking idiot. Listen, I said this on Sunday. I'm going to say it again. You bring in Tony Khan brought in Christian Cage to do this tonight. This is this is a tease. Whatever it could be a tease, but this is legit. He's obviously targeting Kenny Omega. When the match happens, I don't fucking know. They build it for double or nothing, probably. It's their next biggest show of the year. But I said this on Sunday. How do you think a guy like Miro feels in this situation? He just left this type of booking in WWE only to come here and get shit creative handed to him. Whether it's his idea or not, it's still shit creative to be overbooked by a He's fucking overbooked. legend. He's overbooked. Are you kidding me? That would not sit well with me as a performer and a fan. I just left that environment. Now it's happening here when we were promised an alternative. I didn't realize that 47-year-old legends from WWE were the alternative on Wednesday night. Unreal. I'm sorry, folks. That is garbage booking. Garbage booking. You want me to call a spade a spade? WWE does it. 
AEW is doing it, they're getting the same venom from this show that WWE gets. Shit. Fucking awful. Yeah, yeah it's, that's terrible. This, this, this is one of the... This is the worst thing I've seen come out of AEW creative since its inception. Clear. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Why? Because it's just so WWE. That's why yeah. it's the fucking worst. Awful. Yeah. Moving worst. on. This, this, this is worse than the women's division being booked. I shit you not. I'm, I'm not even exaggerating that. James Cotton. <laughs> Shut up, man. In the chat, nothing is booked. Nobody holds up the AEW title without going after the fucking title. Okay? Who else they got lined up for Kenny Omega after John Moxley? Please, I'd love for you to tell me who. Yeah, Moxley's done. Moxley's done. Paige is fucking hanging around with the Dark Order. Who's next? Huh? Yep. Does Christian Cage win the Impact title? Does he go back to TNA? Fuck out of yep. here, man. Fucking stupid. They legit have nobody lined up for Kenny right now. Shit booking is shit booking, folks. Get with the program. Moving it on. Could have been. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm gonna end it with this one. It yeah. could have been. But they got him wrapped up with Sting. It could have been fucking Lance Archer. Could have been. If they wanted to, that would have made sense. Yeah. Or Eddie Kingston. He got beat up by Moxley tonight. Why not go uh, Omega Kingston? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever, man. You got Kingston. You got Archer. Yeah, they will go with the 47-year-old fucking Christian Cage that hasn't had a match in fucking 10 years. That's great. Awesome. Rip Baker, mm. Nyla Rose, and Maki Ito. Get this fuck. Get her off TV, please. Just get her away from me. Hikaru Shida, Thunder Rosa, and uh, Kazuchika Okada 2.0. Rosa, Shida, and Mizunami win the match. We got Rosa leaping off the top rope, doing a tilt the world uh, tequila something that uh, Excalibur said. Whatever he said. They all gathered at ringside. They all looked up and Thunder Rosa fell from the sky. And then uh, we had uh, Guerrero. Eddie, oh, not Eddie Guerrero. Fucking, uh, what's her name? Vicky Guerrero. I'm so Vicky. fucking heated. I'm calling Vicky Eddie. Jesus Christ. Vicky Guerrero held onto Rosa's boot on the apron. Then Ito landed a spinning DDT for a near fall. Vicky stood on the ring apron to continue to distract the referee as Rebel tried to hit Rosa with the crutch. Uh, this was just, this was awful. This was very cartoonish in my opinion. Uh, Ito went after Rosa, and then Rosa counted her into uh, a pinning combination for a win, and that was it. Rosa, Shida, and Okada 2.0 win this match. After the match, Britt Baker attacked Thunder Rosa with a crutch. Rebel uh, took the crutch and started rubbing it and dragging it across Rosa's face. Vicky, Baker, and Rebel, they all stood in the ring after the lockjaw and kind of gloated in their accomplishments here. Uh, Shivani was calling this a vicious attack on Thunder Rosa. And Jesse, it was announced next week it will be Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa in the main event of Dynamite. The ladies are main eventing their first ever Dynamite. It is a lights out, anything goes match, no DQ, unsanctioned. And I will say this. I'm glad this is happening. This is where Rosa gets a revenge. I can't wait to see Thunder Rosa just go balls to the wall with no rules. And Britt Baker is going to have uh, revenge coming to her next week. Uh, there is, in my honest opinion, w w excluding Sheeta being the AEW Women's Champion, th there's no two women in this company that are better served for the main event than these two right here. Because this is, this, legitimately, this is the biggest, I don't want to use the word biggest meaning biggest, but this has been the biggest women's feud on Dynamite for the last couple of weeks, last several weeks, actually. And if there was one women's main event to do it right, they had a great match the first time. I could absolutely see it happening again. They deserve it. <clears throat> I, started, I started playing Call of Duty Mobile again. What? Was, no, look, it's cool because the fucking, the new season just started today. Listen! Listen, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm gonna tack on these fire, uh, these, uh, fire thunder drivers to, uh, your, uh, your receipt here. Ooh. It just came out today. I didn't even have to pay for it. I had COD points already. From Edgar! Edgar! <laughs> Edgar! You're on the show next week, bro. Man. Listen! This, this man. Why is... We've already seen this match. 
It, they, need, they it, need, it needs a conclusion. It. What are you talking they about? What fucking conclusion? They did the match. They killed it. Thunder Rosa lost. It's fine. She put a Britt Baker over. That's cool. Can, what are we still fucked. doing this for? She's been fucked the last two times by, by Britt Baker in these matches. Welcomes. What are you talking about? Well, what is this match for? Gotta be for somebody right. to face Sheeta. Right. Exactly. Right. I mean, what the... F Why? She's already fucking beating everybody else in the fucking division. These two losers lost in the fucking tournament. All right, now and then we, we got Okada losing the tournament to, the, to, to Sheeta and losing the match. Whatever. Now we move on. Look, man, no more Rainmakers. I, Rainmaker! No more. I, I, know, I, I know she watches. I know you're watching, Rosa. And I'm she ain't watching. We, yeah, I, look, you know this better than I do. It's, it's, it's just the way that you're booked. It makes no fucking sense. It makes no sense. I'm looking at two women who could not win in the fucking tournament try to beat the shit out of each other in the main event next week. Why? Who's the fucking champion? Why, why is this a title match in the main event? The first women's match, the main event Dynamite wasn't even for the fucking title. This makes no sense, man. Uh, listen, man, I don't listen. I don't know. It, it could be internal politics. I, I don't know. But it's a lights out, no, uh, anything goes, no DQ match. And now, now they have the pressure of reliving last time's magic. They have to redo another fucking great match like they did last time. And, and it'll, it, it'll happen because you could hide uh, Miss Baker's inability in certain areas. And then now you can let Thunder Rosa really lead in a more brutal fashion. And Britt Baker, she doesn't have to rely on chain wrestling or a fucking sling blade or a super kick or whatever the fuck she's learning from Bay Bay, right? She could just swing a kendo stick or swing a steel chair, pull out some thumbtacks, fucking throw her over the barricade, slam her into a fucking crate or something. I don't know. Let's do this. Who won the first match? Who won the first match? Britt Baker did. Who's been getting their ass kicked since then? Thunder Rosa. Now, who wins this next match? Thunder Rosa. 50 fucking 50 booking. This let's, makes let's, no let's, fucking let's, sense. Let, what, are, what are you talking It's not 50 50, but you know, math clown. Thunder Rosa lost twice to Britt Baker. They, now she's going to get twice. Okay, now this is a type of match where. If she wins, it's going to constitute almost like okay, a big blow off. Two wins. This is the this is the second match. No, they've had two matches already. I remember one. Well, maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe it was uh, one match and an attack. And that th I remember one. I don't remember uh, whatever, 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 one match. Whatever. Who gives? They had shit? one. They had one match. I'm pretty sure they had one match. And Britt Baker won. Fine. Britt Baker's been kicking Rose's ass. Okay, now they're going to have another match. So now either Thunder Rosa has to lose fucking twice to Britt Baker or 50-50 Boogie. Okay. I don't see the problem here. Thunder Rosa has oh. been on the receiving end of Britt Baker for, for months now. This is the guy that wants champions to lose now all of a sudden, too. Listen, I don't like 50-50 Booking. <sighs> this match makes no sense, man. It makes no sense, especially in the main event spot. It makes no sense. The only way I can see this making sense to be in the main event spot, and especially since it's a no DQ match, somebody better be coming out and killing both of these women. I don't and know, man. Let's turn around this whole who, women's who, who, division. Who's, 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 who's going to come out? Who's going to come out? You got you know, Maki Ito come out and fucking start singing uh, Japanese pop tunes? Who's going to no, come man. out? Who's going to come out? They need somebody to fucking who's gonna come, come out. out. You're going to have Ryu Mizunami come out there and fucking start uh, searching for Pokemon? Well, who, who, who's going to come out? I need, a, out? I need, a, a, I need an AJ Lee. I need, I need a Tessa Blanchard. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I need something. This, 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 is, this match is not going to end. Michael well. Reed in the chat says this is their third match. I was right, clown. Why? Because Michael said so? Fuck you and him. What the, who is this guy? Michael Reed in the chat. This is their third match. I knew there was a third match. Well, so what? Do you, re do you remember the other one? Well, I know Britt Baker getting the best of her. That's what I remember. Britt Baker won two already. 
I saw you in the chat. Get the fuck out, clown. You argue like two little schoolgirls. Yeah, I saw you <laughs> benched in my fucking chat by my hand personally. Get the fuck out. Read these fucking guys. Right, listen, it's going to be a great match at the end of it. And that's it. Uh, uh, it we'll it talk might. about it if it makes sense after the match next week. It might. This is so lame. Private party. They were there with Matt Hardy. They consoled Matt Hardy, who was very down about losing money at Revolution. He was at the bar, which is where I usually like to be when uh, Monday Night Raw is on the airs, uh, airwaves. But uh, if I drank, I'd fall asleep at the 8.30 hour. Hardy said he's been reflecting a lot the past few days, and he needs to bring in more money. Private party agreed that more money needs to be had here. Hardy clarified, I need to bring in more money for me. Hardy says he's... Someone that has more than enough money to sustain their business through April 1st. Whatever happens after that, I don't know. So he's adding to his empire. He said he signed a new unit. Now, before I reveal who this new unit was, he said that they got a big money deal with AEW. So big that they won't even notice his cut. Now, like a dummy, I was expecting somebody new. I was (laughs) expecting somebody like the Authors of Pain to show up. or, Or somebody that we haven't seen in a while. But it was uh, Butcher, Blade, and the Bunny. Private party were confused. And they said all four, Hardy said all four of them are going to destroy their opponents on Elevation on Monday, the debut episode, and then they will destroy the Dark Order. So, Jesse, we got uh, Butcher, Bunny, and Blade now uh, with Matt Hardy. Seems like they're, uh, they are they don't know where they need to be once they're with Eddie Kingston. Now they're back with the Bunny. Now they're with Matt Hardy. Well, what's going on here? Well, we can talk about Eddie Kingston now. Yo, that was way back in the beginning of the show. What about Eddie Kingston? He said we couldn't talk about Butcher and Blade yet because we hadn't gotten to that part. Well, I'm of the giving show. you the fucking time to talk about it. Well, what's going on here? Nah, I don't want to talk about it now. All right, well, well nah. then we'll move on to Darby Allen and uh, Scorpio Sky. Apparently, you don't care about Butcher and Blade. Oh, what the fuck, man? They had uh, they had Butcher and Blade all fucking worked out. Well, they got them alley back and they hooked them up with Kingston. Now they're running around here giving money to Matt Hardy. What the fuck, man? What is this? How did we get here? Oh. How did we get here, man? I got fucking Jeffrey over here giving me how many, bro, how many donations you got here tonight, man? I don't even know, man. I got to check my fucking PayPal. Take the fucking segment over, Jesse. Why are they with Matt Hardy? It, it, I have no idea. There's been no tease to it on BTE, no hint of it anywhere. Kingston and Butcher and Blade and, 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 and Kingston's family were all perfectly fine until Kingston started 69 and Moxley and Butcher and Blade started hanging out with Matt Hardy. So I have no idea how this happened. Zero. But I know Butcher and Blade were a couple of badasses and now it looks like they'll be on BTE quite often. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I'm confused by this as well, man. I, I don't know what's going on. It just seems like Butcher and Blade. Too good to be uh, kind of floating in the middle of, you know, this mid-card garbage. But I don't know. It just goes to show I, I'm going to associate it with uh, Tony Khan not knowing what to do with him. That's what I'm going to associate it with. I, I got to shout out Jeffrey, man. He, he gave three donations tonight. Three $200 donations. Oh, Jeffrey wow. donated $600 to the stream. Now see, let's 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 talk about Jeffrey, not this Michael fucking goon who's uh, fucking agreeing with you. We like Jeffrey. I don't know, man. Okay. Jeffrey Jeffrey clearly is sitting with me in the fucking VIP booth, bro. He's got all the fucking beers on tap. He can get whatever the fuck he wants, man. He can, he can own the joint if I if uh, if he wants. The fuck do I need to be here? Hey man, he can he can he can get you a uh, pro wrestling team. He can buy fucking Titus catering, some new fucking vegetables and <laughs> yeah. some new meats for all he wants. I don't know. Get Dana Brooke out of there. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, man. Jeffrey, you fucking savage, man. I don't even know what to say, man. You got me fucking speechless over here. Anyway, we'll talk about uh Jeffrey oh, oh, uh, during the super chats. Shout him out again. Thank you, brother. Really appreciate it. I'll hit you up after the show. Uh moving on here, man. With the main event, we got Darby Allen versus Scorpio Sky TNT title, 14 minutes. Darby Allen wins this one, and he retains the TNT title. There were a couple of things in this match that I really liked. First of all, I thought Darby was hurt legitimately. He tried to uh, 
I don't know if he was trying to skin the cat. He was trying to roll over Scorpio's back from the apron, and he might have rolled his ankle coming on into the ring, but I guess he played it off as a, a storyline injury. So Scorpio targeted the ankle in this match, and there were two things in this match that I really took away. The offense was fucking awesome. These guys work great together. There was a suicide dive underneath the bottom rope that Darby did. Scorpio cu- uh, caught him with a cutter, which would have made Randy Orton fucking smile from ear to ear. If he's not fucking arguing with Soldier Boy or, or Soldier Boy on uh, on Twitter, which is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And then there was another thing where Darby went up for the the coffin drop, and Scorpio Sky caught him backwards in a fucking sit out power bomb. I'm like, holy shit. So there were some really, really great sequences as uh, as far as offense goes here. Darby elbowed Sky off of him while he was on the top turnbuckle. Like I said, he went for the coffin drop. Sky countered into a, a power bomb backwards. Sky set up for the TKO. Darby countered with a small package for the three. Darby wins in 14 minutes to retain the title. Darby then went to console Sky afterwards because Sky was upset. When he turned his back, Sky attacked him, put him in a heel hook. Four referees came out, tried to take Sky off of Darby, who was selling the agonizing pain here of the heel hook. Sky finally broke the hold. Look at his hands like Bob Backlund back in 1994. And he wasn't sure what happened. And he smiled, licked his lips, and he almost came off as if he liked what he did here. Jesse, did you see Sky turning heel? And is this going to be the the push he needs to take him to the next level? Yeah, I said he was turning heel last week. I think was it last week or the week before? He was on commentary, just just turning heel on commentary. And um, I'm I'm loving it. I'm glad he did because I'm not gonna lie, this match was awesome. A damn a damn good wrestling match. Yeah, it really was a damn good wrestling match. I mean, it couldn't have gotten too much better. I just didn't care. I just didn't care. I knew Scorpio wasn't winning. The match was great. I just knew Sky wasn't winning. The most interesting thing about this match is when Scorpio me, turned heel. Uh, listen, Jesse, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. Do you want to know why you didn't care? Because they, they legitimately just got done crowning Sky as the face of the revolution. Right? It, it, it was an imaginary brass ring. It wasn't a briefcase or a contract. A, a, these are the small things that AEW tends to do that end up being mistakes. There, there wasn't enough time in between this Ew. match happening and, and the ladder match for it to breathe for you to care. Tony Khan yeah. had the match happen on Sunday. Sky won right to Wednesday. He gets the title match, and there's absolutely nothing there, but winner of a ladder match gets the champion and no story in between. Yeah, that, no, that, that's I why. I mean, if they knew they were going this direction, especially when they had Sky on commentary just turning, just turning heel, I wouldn't have had him start a turning heel. He just could have been Scorpio Sky. He could have won that match, went out there and shook his hand when he qualified. They had a couple of weeks build. It could have been a babyface versus babyface build. And then during the match, they could have started a heel turn and everything else, and it would have been a little bit more interesting. But I just didn't care. No. I, I, ultimately, I didn't care either, but I, I, I enjoyed the work of both guys, so I, I watched what you said, and what I said was a great wrestling match. It's just, after this, now it's over. I mean, does it continue from here on out? Is this the story? Why did Sky turn heel? Uh, I, I yeah. hope so. I hope they do have something planned after this situation here, but from the latter match to now, we didn't give a fuck about this match. Is there going to be another match? Are they going to describe the heel turn and why he did it? Hopefully. Yeah, it, the match reminded me a lot of the women's title match at the pay-per-view. Yeah. I mean, Kushida was, I mean, I mean, phenomenal fucking wrestler, man. The more I see her, the more I'm impressed, to be honest with you, because I was less impressed with her when I first saw her. But now I'm, I, I give her more and more props, man. She can go. I just didn't care about the match. Yeah, absolutely didn't. agree. They, they went on to uh, talk about next week's Dynamite, which is loaded. Good Brothers, Anderson and Gallows versus Moxley and Kingston. This is a, uh, I believe, a non-title match for the Impact Tag Team titles. Uh, Cody versus Penta which is what I'm looking forward to most. Jurassic Express and Bear Country versus Butcher Blade and Private Party. Matt Hardy's guys. Jade Cargill will be in action, so we get to see her away from Shaq and Cody in one-on-one action. Uh, Me too. And then Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa in the main event. So that is next week's Dynamite. They loaded it up as a St. Patrick's Day smash for next week's show. 
What about Jay Cargill kills both of them? Well, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Somebody, something. Man. The Inner Circle War Council was the thing that ended the show, and then I immediately got to thinking that, well, if they're saving this for the end, then something is going to happen. Then just They're just not going to do anything at the end if this is, you know, what MJF and Jericho had planned. They, they saved it for the ending, which kind of gave it away that something big was going to happen here. But Inner Circle made their ring entrance, and Jericho did his thing, and everybody was singing along. Jericho said, when any great army needs a change... It uh, changes its, its course in the middle of battle, and they have a war council to decide if they should continue on and how to continue on. He said they've gone off course lately, but it's easily remedied. He said they are the smartest in the business. He said it's time for a new attitude and outlook and maybe even a new member. MJF said, with all due respect, Chris, he doesn't think that they need a new member. He said, instead, it might be time to let someone go. Out comes Sammy Guevara. Nice to see him. He looked re- uh, fresh and relaxed. Lots of, uh, you know, gum chewing by Sammy. He was chewing his gum pretty prominently here. But he had something to but say. He, he, he went home. He was hanging out with his mom. Uh, is that what he did? He defended the BTE title against his mom. Oh, Jesus Christ. Have you seen Jesus. Sammy Guevara's mom? Uh, I have not, no. I do I need? Do I need to? Do it I need hurt. to? It won't hurt. Okay. It hey, hurt. There you go. Okay. So Jericho said, "Oh, look who's here! You remember his name, right?" He asked what he's doing. Jericho, uh, Jericho was standing in the ring, upset at Guevara. Guevara told Jericho, "He knows he's not happy with him, and you're the last person that I know wants to see me." But he needs to show him something. Jericho said, "Listen, you're dead to me now." Sammy entered the ring yelling at Jericho, look, look at what I have for you. They cut to a screen on the, uh, or a video on the big screen, and it was Sammy setting up a hidden camera which filmed MJF entering the locker room of the inner circle talking to Santana Ortiz and Jake Hager. He said tonight they cut the head off the snake. He said they're going to give Jericho a nice little dirt nap. Back in the ring, M- MJF said, look, well, this is not how I expected it to come about and you figuring it out this way, but get him. And he orders the inner circle to get Jericho. Sammy and everybody else involved there, or Ortiz, Santana, Hager, they all advance Jericho. And they quickly turn their back on MJF and sided with Jericho. It was all a, a setup here. So you really think we don't talk to each other every single day, you stupid son of a bitch? He then said they were waiting for him to hang himself. He said he brought him to the inner circle, so he's the one who's going to knock him out of it. He shoved MJF down, fired him right on the spot. He said they're going to give him an old school inner circle beatdown. MJF was crying and begging in the corner. He swore that he didn't want to take it over. He then took on a a kind of serious tone that MJF, and he's like, I I didn't want to take it over. I didn't want to take it over. That's because I was too busy building my own. The lights went out, and inside the ring was Tully, FTR, Sean Spears, Wardlow, and FTR. They all began fighting. And this is where they beat the living shit out of the inner circle. They handcuffed Santana and Ortiz. They gave one of them a spike pile driver. Jericho was bloodied at the end of this thing. They beat him with his own baseball bat. Tully then handed MJF the bat. He jabbed Jericho in the gut with it. Then they dragged uh, Jericho to the stage. Wardlow gave him a massive power bomb off the stage, threw d- debris and tables down below. And that's where the show went off the air. MJF kissed his dynamite diamond ring, hugged Dax of FTR. They were all talking amongst each other, and that's the way the show went off the air. This was was a swerve of swerves, and MJF is now the leader of the new potential four horsemen. Like Jesse and I talked about at the top, this is excellent. This was a great ending, but there was a lot to digest here, and clearly this is far from over. Wait to see where they go with this one, man. It's man, it I would man, I don't I would have MJF just run just Kenny's gonna be busy. Kenny's got two titles, Kenny's gotta worry about people coming at him from impact. He may be in or out. I would have MJF run rough shot across AEW, him and his crew. Everybody. Listen, man, blood just, and guts. I know Tony Khan is probably setting up blood and gut blood and guts here, man. We're gonna have Jericho, LAX, and Sammy Guevara versus the Full Horseman. That's what we're doing. Yeah, man, I'm loving it. It's going to be great. It's going to be their own version of War Games, and uh, it's 
It's going to be awesome, man. I'm very excited to see what MJF does as the leader of this group. A lot of people have kind of compared compare him to a young Ric Flair. Uh, I don't necessarily like comparisons like that. MJF's going to be his, you know, his zone in this role. You know, I don't see, I, I see the Ric Flair similarities as far as heel goes, but this is this is a, a, a new level of heel that MJF is doing. It's not like uh, Ric Flair, you know, but this is going to be a great role for him. He's the great. He's one of the greatest mouthpieces in the business. So, for them to have somebody that good at this age leading a group like that to really bring that name back to prominence, I mean, you really can't ask for any better. We have to put everybody in a in a horseman's spot. We're gonna we're gonna give MJF Ric Flair. I'm giving I'm giving I'm giving the enforcer Aaron to uh to Wardlow easily. Listen, man, the Brain Busters there. Uh, I mean. You got FTR, fucking mirror images of the Brain Busters. Oh, yeah, that's I mean, right. Oh, oh, man. I mean, Jesus Ooh. Christ. Then you got Wardlow, Wardlow. I mean, Wardlow. A lot of people say Wardlow reminds them of a young Batista, man. You know? Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. But um, Wardlow and Hager, add them to the blood and guts, make it a five-on-five. Five. Listen, man, I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. It's going to be awesome. But, guys, that is that is the review portion of the show. I appreciate you sticking with me here. We got fucking Jeffrey here, man. He donated another $400, made it an even $1,000 on the night. This guy is absolutely out of his fucking mind. Generous. Holy shit. I've never had anything like that happen before. This is uh, this is fucking unreal, man. Did he what? attach my names to any of them? <laughs> he I'm says just... you do a fantastic job. Like 50% fantastic? <laughs> what, are, what, are, what are you thinking? Like... Like 50, 60, 40. I'm just wondering. That's a Listen, man, all the shit you talked on Lee Johnson and Thunder Rose, man. I don't know, man. I don't know. I just started hating Lee Johnson just so you guys feel better, maybe, I guess. Jesus Christ, man. Anyway, guys, this is a very historic episode of Off the Script here on Wednesday night. Thank you, Jeffrey. I appreciate you, brother. Unbelievable. But we got Super Chats to read through, guys. Again, hit that thumbs up. We need 50 more likes for 750, 47 to be exact. If you have not hit the thumbs up yet, please hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not done so. I don't know who else is entertaining you like Jesse and I on Wednesday nights, man. Come on. Hit that subscribe button down below. Follow me on social media at JD from NY206. That's Twitter and Instagram. We got some great content coming up for the rest of the week, man. We got off the script and SmackDown Live on Friday night with the live stream. And WrestleMania season doesn't feel like it. But it's going to be a busy, busy WrestleMania week from what I can tell. Let's get these Super Chats rolling here right at the top, man. We got a lot to read through. We have Ben. Five dollars Super Chat. Love the show tonight. Great ending. And generally, a lot of things happen that will open up multiple opportunities. Scorpio Sky, though. Thank you for this. Thank you, Ben. I really appreciate you, man. Nick, name my... $5 UK Super Chat. I want to see more from Maki Ito. Her unique style and character plus unique moveset let her stand out in a rather bland women's division. What do you think of Maki Ito, Jesse? Who? Who? Is that the singing pop star? Maki the- Ito, the one who is uh, a walking Pokemon singing Japanese pop tunes. That's one? Okay. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know if that was Okada or what. I don't know. Is what it is. Thank right. you, Nick. Uh, nickname my. Thank you for the five dollar UK, bro. Michael Raymond with a five dollar super chat. Sinister Six destroy Inner Circle. Christian is gunning for Omega. Mox and Kingston make challenge for the Impact Tag Team Titles. Great show despite TNT audio. That was all right. I'm not for. I'm not for Christian Cage gunning for Omega. Give me a break. Thank you, Michael. Jack Rice with a five dollar super chat. AEW Dream Match. Adam Page and Christian Cage versus Ethan Page and Brian Cage. In a steel cage. Special referee Diamond Dallas Page. Sorry, Jay, you you had to do it. You knew it was coming one way or another. Of course, somebody had to mention that. Is it a dream match? I don't know, Jack. To each his own. What match is it? The one I just read. The one I just read to you. The Maki Ito shit? Adam Page, Christian Cage, Ethan Page, and Brian oh, Cage bull- in a steel cage match. Oh, no, no. Now, whatever. I thought he was just 
telling a poem or some shit, dude. No, he said there's a dream match. Okay. Toxic Banana 99 with a 199 Super Chat. I was very sports entertained tonight. Oh. Yeah. Well, well put. Yeah. Toxic Banana. There you go, bro. Darius, the official 499. How about that ending tonight? Totally didn't expect MJF getting a whole new faction, but it was great. It's awesome. Ricochet, 499. Rick O'Shea. I'm sorry. I, I pronounced it like the loser on WWE TV. Rick O'Shea. 499 Super Chat. Glad to see AEW found Riddle's shoes during that Christian segment. Riddle's shoes. Bad. I don't know, man. Bad. Cool Jags with a 999 Super Chat. AEW was overall a good show tonight. MJF forming the Four Horsemen was fantastic. Scorpio Sky versus Darby was a great match as well. Women's division, not so much. Watch NXT tonight as well. Really good show. <laughs> yeah. Sure. You mean with their women's division getting tag team titles and then crowning tag team champions only for those tag team champions to lose in the very same night an hour later? Yeah, great booking. Great show. Can't wait to shit on that on Saturday. Oh, yeah. DX Tricksters with a $5 UK. AEW made the explosive barbed wire death match look like a joke. Moxley and Kenny showing up like nothing ever happened. They shouldn't be on TV for weeks. Listen, man, the fucking match was already ruined. So Tony Khan said, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go out there. I need you to point. I need, absolutely nobody was selling the fucking injuries from a steel barbed wire exploding death match. What the fuck do we know? I mean, nobody sold shit. That's a very good point. <laughs> cool Jags with a 199. Also excited to see Cross versus Balor at Takeover. Is that official? I would assume it is. Michael Raymond. Oh, by the way, speaking of Cross, Jesse, I don't know if you, you heard this one. Um, Cross had a secret meeting with Vince McMahon Monday before Raw. Uh, well, it wasn't that much of a secret, now was it? Oh, well. I mean, we weren't supposed to know. It was reported, but... He, he, just, he had a meeting with Vince. It was not a secret well, meeting well, anymore. Well, hey, <laughs> I, I, I wonder what Triple H knows about this meeting. And two, goodbye, Cross. Does he beat Balor? He was already in NXT longer than I thought he'd be. I know. I'm surprised he's still there right now. Michael Raymond with a $2 Super Jab. Maki Ito is now the protagonist of the planet. Okay. Whatever, man. Yeah, all right. <laughs> DX Tricksters with a $5 UK. Also, I'm happy for Christian to be in AEW, but he shouldn't be getting world title opportunities in 2021. He should be used to put younger talent over. Bro, I don't mind Christian getting a world title opportunity, but don't walk into the fucking company. Listen, don't walk into the company a after not having a match for, what, eight years? A and then expect a world title. You've beaten nobody. Give this guy a year before you start giving him world title shots. And does it have to be against Omega? There's absolutely no reason whatsoever why Christian Cage should be anywhere near the same sentence as no. Kenny Omega. No. Jacob no. Donnelly with a $10 super chat. I really enjoyed AEW tonight. Could have done without the Christian versus Omega tease, but I loved Omega's promo, the ending, and a presumed Pentagon singles push. He's hoping Zelina is his manager. I agree on all accounts, Jacob. Thank you, yeah. bro. DX Strictors with a $5 UK. By the way, my sincere condolences to Jesse. What is oh, the poor man shit. going to do next week? Rosa versus Baker next week. It's like Jesse's wet dream come true it makes no sense hey we get to see thunder rosa in the ring bro great put her in something meaningful she will be wilheim rupenshire still my favorite name out of all these fucking names man what words did you block my super chats never work uh, there's a lot of shit that's blocked on here mr rupenshire YouTube, the fuck are you man, using? It's YouTube. It's probably YouTube, man. You can't curse in the Super Chats. Everything's so fucking social justice warrior-esque here, man. Paul Van Tassel with a $5 Super Chat. He says nothing. Don't be shy here, bro. Come on. Open your mouth. Thank you for the $5. Ricochet, 199 Super Chat. Looks like NXT gets beat by Impact for Rebellion. I don't give a fuck what NXT does, man. Just move it to Tuesday night. Get it away from me. Phil 
Phil with a 1999 Super Chat. Just when you think MJF was going to kick out Jericho from the inner circle, Jericho kicked out MJF, and there's a new stable. The War Council ended in a war with two new factions. I genuinely was surprised and loved every second of it. I think we all were, man. There was going to be a swerve, but they swerved us with a different swerve. Yeah. Gotta love it, man. You don't think Jericho and MJF have their finger on the pulse, bro? Come on. Mm-hmm. Big Ben, 2493, 499 Super Chat. How long till AEW gets the sub service for pay per views like the 999 WWE Network? $50 is a lot for one show. Peacock is also making possible 499 pay per views. Come on, Tony. Give them time, bro. I see AEW doing it. Yes, yeah, so I see Tony Khan doing something similar, man. Dane Borget with a 199 Super Chat. FTR versus Santana Ortiz, take my money. Absolutely. Michael Raymond with a $2 Super Chat. 69 me, Don. The best quote in wrestling history. Make it a t-shirt. It's going to be on a t-shirt. Uh, I don't know if you guys have uh, heard. I don't well, I don't even know if I should be repeating this because he apologized for his comments. Raj Geary on Wrestling Inc. made a comment about Mrs. Sheeta there being booked strong and having a long reign as AEW Women's Champion because she is Kenny Omega's girlfriend. Oh, boy. He had to apologize for the comment because he... Uh, must have been drinking and it slipped out. Why would he report something like that? Though? I don't. I don't know, man. I mean, he apologized. I mean, it's not, but it's listen. not like him to report bullshit. No, he's very credible, and you know, listen to me. He's a man. He apologized for his mistake. I gotta. You gotta appreciate that. Yeah, but why? I still want to know where he came from. Somebody said something to him about uh, it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's got. Maybe he got Meltzer's ear a little too much, man. Maybe, maybe he was on the nose and then somebody reached out to him and said, retract that shit yep. now. Yep. Jacob Donnelly with another fight out Super Chat. Have to throw this out there. No one should doubt your opinions on WWE's use of women's tag team titles again after NXT buried theirs in one night. Jacob, listen, bro. There's going to be a massive rant coming on Saturday. A massive rant. I don't know who the fuck booked that shit tonight, but Jesus Christ, man. Those titles were not needed. At all. He had women's titles on the main roster that should be in NXT. The main roster tag team titles are fucking worthless. There are no tag teams. You barely even have divisions on both shows. So why is there a need for tag teams? Now you got tag teams in NXT separate from the main roster, and there's not one fucking legit tag team on that show. You got Shotzi and Ember, who are not a real tag team as your tag team champions. The only other legit team on that show were Casey Cotton Zaro and Caden Carter. And now you're having Raquel Gonzalez focus on EO. So even Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez aren't even a tag team full time. I mean, do I make sense or do I make sense? They put Ember Moon with Shotzi? Yeah, as the tag team champions, yeah. They're the tag team champions? Yeah, they unveiled new championships, gave them to Raquel and Dakota, and had them lose to Shotzi and Ember in one hour. He's just fucking good. Oh, yeah. whatever. I yeah. don't watch that show. Anymore. You want to know why? Sh- you want to know why Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez didn't win the tag team titles? Because Vince wouldn't allow it. So when people say Vince doesn't have a hand in NXT booking, you don't know jack shit, bro. All they had to do Fuck was beat here. Nia and Shayna. That's it. That's, That's it. it. Vince didn't want them to lose to NXT talent. That's it. And if anybody tells you otherwise, they're bullshitting you. They're bullshitting you and they're covering up the truth. Vince didn't want that to happen. So Triple H said, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to make my own titles. I'm going to do the women's tag team division the right way because you're not doing it the right way. And the scarier part is I know Vince doesn't give two shits about protecting Shayna Baszler. He doesn't give a shit about the tag team titles or the women's titles. But somebody is in the fucking Anawaii family in that tag team. Yeah. So, fucking awful. Darius, the official, 499 Super Chat. Thunder Rosa is going to go all out in the main event for Jesse. LOL, love you, Jesse. Says Darius, the official. Uh, thank you. Hey, you know what? Since we can't get rid of Nia Jax and we're trying to put her in something that she can be tolerated in, why isn't she at Roman's table? 
Listen, man, these are questions that I don't have answers for because they make too much sense. The fucking break them up. Shayna Baszler does not need a fucking tag team. Let her run rough shot in the fucking division. Put no, Nia but, no, but they, 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 they want to put Reginald with Nia Jax and have him be like a fucking one of the mini goldfish crackers for Nia Jax. That's what they want to do. What the fuck? She can just sit there, say nothing, and go injure somebody when Roman tells her to. That's what she does anyway. I don't know. Things make no sense. But what the fuck do we know? Darius, thank you, brother. Hollywood guy. Five out super chat. This episode is better than Raw SmackDown and the recent AEW pay-per-view. Hashtag the new horseman. Thank you, Hollywood guy. Anything's better than Raw. My fucking bowel movements on Tuesday morning are better than Monday Night Raw. Paul Wu, $5 Super Chat. To be honest, there is just too much wrestling content now. I feel burnt out. Just want to support JD and the OTS fam. Don't forget to call me a goon. Bro, listen. Paul. You're not a goon. You're here every week, every day that I stream, donating. You're not a goon. And let me take the bullet for you. You don't have to watch anything. Thank you, Paul Wu. Chris, okay. Mo- what, 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 what do you got? I got, I got in trouble, man. Issa heard me put Naya with Roman. Oh, you don't want to be in trouble by Issa, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You don't want to be sorry. in trouble by Issa, man. She'll, she'll, listen. I'm sorry. She'll rip your eyes out, bro. And then she'll feed them to you. You don't, don't want to do that. You don't want to piss her off. Sorry. But you know, he made fun of, of uh, you know, he made fun of um uh, Bad Bunny earlier, too. You should fucking uh, get on him. No, I didn't, man. Yeah, Quit listen, get me in don't the bullshit trouble. me. Oh, what the fuck? Get him. Yeah, Demon Diva is not going to turn on me. Bad so Bunny is a off. Hall of Famer, bro. That's, those are my exact words on this show. You shit all over. I did not. Good thing this shit was recorded. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did no such thing. And she's right. Why would I put Nia Jax anywhere near Roman Reigns right now? She's fucking right. Listen, man, Nia Jax is fucking horrendous in every way possible. But if WWE booked her seriously, she should be. She could be good. Could she be. could be good. Doesn't mean she's a good wrestler. Not even just seriously, because I mean, just the right way. Just she's just yeah. booked all wrong. Just all wrong. I'm not like most girls. Yeah, I mean, just... clearly you're not. You can't wrestle for shit. Yeah. Uh, Chris Morabitu, do you think Penta will beat Cody next week? Yes. Been dying for a singles run for Penta. Much love. Always appreciate the content and your input. Thank you, Chris. Michael Raymond. Everybody with- beats Cody. Go ahead. Leave Cody alone, bro. He's going away. That's... Michael Raymond with another fight out of Super Chat. I'll take the bomb botch and attempted cleanup any day over the rumble handcuff botch. Come on, bro. No. The handcuff botch was a botch. A stupid one, but the bomb botch is greater than the rumble botch. Uh, we're, we're talking about the Hell in a Cell botch with Rollins and the Fiend. I'll take yeah. I'll, That's a bigger botch than the fucking bomb botch at Revolution. Owen yeah. should have taken the belt and dropped it that Friday. Michael Rand, I'm going to refund you the fucking $5. You, 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 just, you just super <laughs> chatted me for Roman Reigns to lose the title. Roman oh, God, should no. not lose the title at all. No. Guys should take it into next year as the fucking champion, man. Roman is untouchable, man. He wears a gold glove for a reason. See, you thought Demon D was mad at me. She just heard you say Roman should lose the title. I said Roman shouldn't lose the title. What are you talking no. about? No, no, the, the super chat. Oh. Yeah. I'll tell you when Roman loses the title and when it's right. Right now it's not. Mr. Cake with a $2 super chat. Jesse, pretend Jericho was Edgar during the end. Oh, yeah. Look at you, Mr. Cake. Sucking up over here. Big Ben, 2493, 499 super chat. I love to see a Spotify music playlist with all the songs in the intro build up and during the super chats. I think the OTS family would love it. I might actually do that, bro. Everybody's asking me for these songs. They're copyright free songs, man. Easily found on YouTube. Robert Lamo with a five dollar super chat. What about Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman ending Hell in a Cell? That sucked too. That's even that. Listen, that, that's double as worse because WWE booked back to back endings of no contest Hell in a Cells. 
They did that per someone wrote that with a pen and put it on paper. Mr. Cake with a $2 super chat. Even Mick Foley said AEW shouldn't should have owned up to it. Of course they of course they should have. Tony Khan looked like a fucking geek. Stop being a mark for your fucking booking and, and, and your roster and just own up to being someone that made a mistake. Daryl Daryl Stoltz says the Rock's daughter will be put with Roman as a female member of the bloodline. That would be perfect way to get Roman's magic. Oh, uh, I like Simone, that. I, I think that's a great idea. Will she be ready by that time? Though? Simone is nowhere near ready for TV. Because you know that match is happening in Los Angeles. If they can have it happen. Who, uh, Simone and Charlotte? No. I'm, I'm <laughs> that's, listen, that's by that, happen. listen, Charlotte's going to break her father's record by next year, bro. I'm going to fucking puke all over the place. I'm going to film it and it's going to go viral. Um, no, I'm rocking uh, and Roman. Yeah, if, 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 I mean, look, they don't have rock. They, they Whenever they get them, it's going to happen. No. Mr. Cake, thank you for the $2, bro. Um, the Greatest Fan 18, $2 UK. Thunder Rosa is coming to Chicago on June 5th. Is she now? Awesome. I'll forward her <laughs> Jesse's address. You won't have to. I'll go show up to the event. What's she doing? <laughs> Let me find out. Let's... She's probably got her Mission Pro Wrestling coming to, uh, to Chicago. Really? Let me see. Is it Mission Pro? Yeah, I think, I think she's the, the one who runs it, yeah. Might be, I don't know. World of Wrestling, five dollars super chat. I predict the inner circle versus MJF's new faction in a war games at double or nothing. What do you think, Jesse, of that happening? Um, I'm gonna give you my answer before Jesse does. Uh, they need to get the fuck out of Daly's place for that to happen. They need to get the fuck out of Daly's place just in general. Uh, who? What? Are you even paying Isn't attention? Nice? I'm trying to find out when fucking All right, moving on. Mission Pro Wrestling's coming. Joshua Schneider with a new membership, bro. Thank you for becoming a VIP inside the venue, bro. What do you want to drink? Tonight we got MJF's Vintage Reserve Number One. It's probably too expensive for you. But I'll buy you a bottle. Actually, you know what? I'll buy you a bottle. I'll buy fucking Daryl the entire fucking shit, man. Uh, not Daryl. Uh, Jeffrey. Daryl, too, because he's a VIP. I'm buying Jeffrey the whole fucking case. Fucking guy over here thousand dollars tonight the whole bar is yours bro take it all it's all you daryl too take daryl away there you go joshua snyder ten dollar super chat hey jd my first super chat love you and jesse keep me up on aew i don't have a tv at the moment so thank you very much my pleasure joshua Maurice Lionheart Jackson, 499 Super Chat. What's up, you goon? <laughs> he says. Fun and entertaining podcast, and I just a thought. Would like to see Kozlov return. Dude looks chiseled these days. Bro, you may be the only person in existence yeah. to want to see Vladimir Kozlov return. Thank you for 499, man. Robert Lamoa. $5 Super Chat. Don Callis, grab the detonator and continue the countdown for explosion. Rick O'Shea, 199 Sometimes Jesse invents things to complain about. Yeah, I just invent the shit, dude. It never happened. It's just me making it up. What the fuck is wrong with people, man? Rick O'Shea, what's your problem, bro? What the fuck is wrong with people? Man? What are you talking about, man? I wish Bruce Pritchard would invent storylines that we actually care about. I just made up everything that I complained about. Michael Raymond with a two dollar super chat. Eddie places his friend's life over title beef. I guess so, unless they go for the tag team titles. I don't know, man. Mr. Cake two dollar super chat. Moxley, Archer, Kingston, three man death squad. P Mac five dollar super chat. Hey J D and Jesse, my son Kamar's twelve birthday is today, and he loves your big dummy brawn impressions. Can he get a shout out? Kamar, happy 12th birthday, bro. Wee! Happy birthday. Wee! You know, Ron Strowman runs fast. Oh, my God, dog. P 
PMAC, thank you, brother. Maurice Lionheart Jackson, 199. I'd like to see Pentagon as world champion. Me too. Devar with a five dollar super chat. If Brock went to AEW, he would would he be Suplex City Lesnar? Would Tony Khan allow that? Who gives a fuck? Brock Who is gonna be ba- Brock is gonna be Boston Tony Khan around. What the fuck are you talking about? Who cares? You think Brock Lesnar is gonna take a, a, for orders from Tony Khan? <laughs> yeah, Brock's gonna Brock fucking does. bully him around. Brock does what Brock wants, man. PMAC with another $5 super chat. My wife handles the finances. She's asking me where the $5 every week or every other week is going. I said, hon, I'm supporting the best damn podcast in the community, OTS. Listen, PMAC, get me on the fucking phone with your wife, bro. I'll explain it to her in detail. She's got a problem with it? Hit me up. I'll be as respectful as I could be. Yeah, give me your wife's phone number so I can be respectful. Listen, clown. The oh, fuck, dude. Listen, clown. Unbelievable. You got Edgar to take care of. No, you roll. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Where's Edgar? Hold on. JM1 with a 999 Super Jet Challenge. At El Capitan and at Punchline Mav. There we versus go. Versus JD and Shy Town Smark at WrestleMania 37 in a street fight. Two out of three falls. I won't need two falls. Man. Wait, 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 who, who the fuck is El Capitan and Punchline Mav? Do I know these people? Why I would I no know idea. these people? I have no take idea. Take Jesse, I'll take Issa, and then I'll take fucking Daryl and Jeffrey. We'll make it a four on three handicap match. You get to pick your own fucking team now. What the fuck is this? Dude? I'll give you Edgar. Edgar could be your manager. I think you need it. Edgar is worthless. Edgar, are you worthless? If not, say something. The greatest fan with two two dollar UK super chats. Nothing. Use hashtag free Edgar if your team JD. Use hashtag justice for Julio if you're on team Jess. Who the fuck is Julio? Who the fuck is Julio? What are you trying to people? I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. And I can't find an event for a Thunder Rosa June 5th. Laura Conway, 299. Maybe she's hiding it from you. 299, Laura Conway. Yeah. JD, you're cracking me up tonight. Thank you for that, Laura. Thank you. Michael Raymond, two dollar super chat. Page and Dark Order will take down Omega in the end. Oh yeah, Page will mm-hmm. take down Omega. The Dark Order, no. no. Big Stace with a five dollar super chat. Kenny Omega pulled an eight mile. You can't make in fun of them harder than they make fun of themselves. Yeah, and hidden underneath all the laughter was ridiculousness. They should they should just own up to the botch. Pretty much. Toxic Banana 99, 199 Super Chat. I see a lot of 2005 Batista in Wardlow. I see it. I see it. Mr. Cake with a $2 Super Chat. Thoughts on Johnny Ace being back as head of talent relations. We're effed. I don't know why people are making a big deal about this, about uh, people power. People, people power. People, people power. Listen, folks. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, there's no head of talent relations on the main roster, folks. Head of talent relations is Triple H. Who's finding everybody for Vince to bury? Triple H. You think Johnny Ace is finding people out there to fucking sign to WWE? Triple H is head of talent relations, folks. This is not new information. Johnny Ace, people power. Give me a break. Makes no Guy is married sense. to the fucking Bella Twins mom. Go home. Yeah. Go take care of your grandkids, you fucking people power. Robert Lamoa with a $5 super chat and another five, two, te- two $5 super chats. Shady, stop it, man. You know you were enjoying Maki Ito singing. Stop lying to yourself, dog. Admit it. Maki Ito sucks. I'm sorry. She's better on social media than she is in AEW. I don't know what is it, I don't know what what is it with you geeks and these fucking Japanese women, man? Do they remind you of anime? Are they a fetish of yours? 
No, they just want to see you. You, you love you. You love dreaming and and, and thinking about young Japanese schoolgirls. Well, well, what's wrong with you? I'm trying to get you canceled. Mr. K, actually, no, I'm sorry. Robert Lamoa says, Jesse, your facial expressions when you said you don't care about Darby versus Sky. LOL, I'm dying. Did not fucking care. Mr. Cake, thoughts on Johnny Ace? Yeah, we just we just said that. I just read that one. Oh my goodness, man, you guys are fucking crazy, man. Jesus fucking Christ. Where am I here? I'm lost my I lost my myself here. Devar. Oh, 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 good. Keep looking. Hold on. I can't find this fucking show with Thunder Rosa and Jewel People Fit. Power. If, somebody, if somebody knows about it, give me some more People details power. about it so I can look it up. So De I'm about tickets. De Devar Davis, five dollars super judge. Jesse and Edgar. We're former OTS Tag Team Champions, now going one-on-one -on -one at the Rumble match. Ended in a draw. The GM said there would be a special ref. Continues. All right. Oh, we're booking this fucking match now? Over and over. Who's booking this shit? Man? I don't know. I'm going to set up a ring inside the venue. It's on the construction right now. Uh, Israel, $20 Super Chat. I thought it was only me, but I heard the same thing in the background, and Miro can... Get a break is a bad week for Tony. You are the king of this realm, JD. Keep up the good work. When will Santana be on CNC? Uh, maybe three weeks from now. Damn fucking right I'm the king of this realm, man. Nobody does it like me. And you're going to see that in the next five weeks, man. Whole new layout coming. Dayron Sanders with a $2 Super Chat. Sent my Super Chat at 10 p.m. Not sure if you got it. Oh, I got it, Dayron. Thank you, brother. Chris with a 499 Super Chat. What's up, JD, Jesse, and OTS fam? NXT was a good show outside of the NXT Women's Tag Team titles. WrestleMania week is going to be long. OTS for life, brother. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I, I don't like long WrestleMania weeks. We'll see what happens. I may be dead by Wednesday. One night Raw is going to kill me on Monday. All yeah. on, that's all I'll say. Is it WrestleMania season yet? Does anybody feel it? No. I don't know whether it's WrestleMania season or I'm booking TLC. I don't know. Pool Jags, 199. What happened to the wins and losses, AEW? Cody? It's a good question. It's a good question, man. I don't know. Justin Stripling, 499 Super Chat. What are y'all's thoughts on NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver being a two-night event on WrestleMania week this year? I fucking hate it. TakeOver was already devalued because of the pandemic because they're working out of a fucking gymnasium. Now you're going to get two nights in a gymnasium, and great. Do they even have 10 matches that anybody cares about to fill out two nights? The more you do something, the less value it has. I don't understand these people. Oh, we're getting a free TakeOver with commercials on Wednesday night, and then we're getting a Peacock exclusive on Thursday. Yeah, great. It's exactly what I want with my fucking takeover. Commercials. Devar Davis, $5 Super Chat. The ref is the OTS World Champ JD. There must be a winner. Winner also faces JD at Mania. Reign two years at Fast Lane, three stages of hell. Who's face and heel JD? Jesse's the heel. Eggers the face. I'm the referee. I'm always the heel, man. I'm not babyface. Fuck, I want to be so, a baby face for. So if I'm healed and you're healed and you're the fucking referee, <laughs> I'm easily winning this match. No, no, I'm the creative mastermind here, man. You you do what I say I do. Oh, yeah. And the same way you love tag team champions losing on TV. All right, here we go. Moving on. Chris with another 499 Super Chat. Missed AEW tonight. Luckily, I have the best podcast in the IWC to catch up on the show. Acknowledge the tribal chief of the IWC. Thank you, Chris. Mr. Premium, 2002, 499. I could have used that money to get myself a new car. LOL. Congrats on making bank tonight. Listen, man, I don't tell Jeffrey to do anything, man. He does it out of the kindness of his soul. I'm going to buy him drinks, man. Whenever the meet and greet happens, all the drinks and food are on me, man. Fuck this guy. He ain't paying for a goddamn thing. Michael yeah. Reed. $20 super chat. Yeah, I might buy Jesse's drinks, too, unless... uh. He continues to fight with Edgar here. Michael Reed, $20 Super Chat. Hey, JD, thank you for everything you do. I would say the same to Jesse, but you can kiss my you-know-what. How would you book Omega after he wins the other title? Who's his first opponent? 
This will be their third match. Jesse says Michael Reed. Michael Reed, Jesse, says Thunder Rose and Britt Baker at three matches. He says so, sure. Whatever. Edgar Estrada with a $20 super chat. J fucking D. Another banger of a show, except for this boring bitch on the right. Here's Here's the number one. Oh, Jesse, here's the number one you asked for. It gives a middle finger emoji. JD, stop carrying this trash every Wednesday night. AEW was an edit of 10, in my opinion. Shout out to the chat. Jesse is shit. He says with a poop emoji. And something more interesting, I found the Thunder Rosa event. (laughs) Uh, What happened? I found it. What is it? uh, June 5th. It said, uh, um, it said Marion. It's a, it's a, it's a, you don't know what Mary is. Like, no, Mary. It's a, it's a school. It's a school. Oh. Marion Catholic is a high school in um, Chicago Heights. So she's like, um, probably about 10 minutes from me. Oh, there you go. Look at that. 10 minutes from me. Driving distance for Jesse to get a fire thunder driver. I will be there. VIP. There you go. Oh, man. A separate event before the show. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to get one of those. Mr. I'm Premium, with, yeah, you buy tickets I mean, and then you bring the, the you bring this you bring the sign say, and say OTS loves Thunder Rosa. I'm coming for Thunder Rosa. Mr. Premium, I mean, two thousand two I mean, with a two ni- <laughs> with a two ninety nine super chat, Mr. Premium. Maki Ito equals the mute button being pressed. Absolutely. I, st- I started playing Call of Duty Mobile. Joshua Schneider with a ten dollar super chat. Do you think it's too early for women to main event AEW? It took WWE years. And their women are better. I don't know why they're doing it, man. Listen, Thunder Rosa is excellent at what she does, but it, it does come off a little forced. Yep. Bro, did Jeffrey just give another two hundred dollars? What the fuck is this guy? Just Jeffrey, what the fuck are you doing, man? They got rob a bank. Holy shit, brother! Listen, what are you doing, man? I love you, bro. Raging Girl Gamer with five dollars super chat. Sorry for not being at the review that much tonight. I've been having a terrible week as of late. Listen, Rage, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hopefully, hopefully everything is all right. Michael Raymond with a five dollars super chat. I don't want Roman to lose the title, but that decision to have the red stop at seven for twenty seconds took away from any semblance of reality. Much love, brother. Tribal Chief, $2 Super Chat, Canadian. JD Wood, opening a sports bar, be in your plans. I'd like to at some point in my life. I think that would be awesome. I watch enough Bar Rescue and John Tafford to know the insides, man. Scooter the U Smith with a $5 Super Chat. What's up? Two things I don't care about in AEW. Christian Cage in the main event and Mikey, oh, Maki Ito. You spelt it wrong, bro. Maki Ito singing that BS like a dummy. Get out of here. Phil with a 499 Super Chat. The heck is this beef with Edgar and Jesse? Is this some real heat going on? It's fucking real. He it's is as lucky. real as Jesse's love for Dr. Britt Baker. Okay. Phil. Thank you for the 499, man. JT Golden with a 199 Super Chat. Edgar versus Jesse. Winner takes Thunder Rosa home. Blah, <laughs> blah. There you go, man. You can't get any bigger than that. You better fucking win the match, man. It's a nice pot there. Edgar, where are you from, man? From so, some what, what scuzzy, what scuzzy uh, ghetto do you live in? What, what part of the worst part of what town do you live in? Uh, no, fuck Jesse. That's not where you live. Come on, you fucking degenerate piece of shit. Javar Davis with a five dollar super chat at the chamber. Double count out. First stage. Two falls count, and Hell in a Cell, who will face the longest reigning defending undisputed OTS champion, who wins? Scooter the U-Smith, $5 Super Chat. What's wrong with Japanese, my bro? Asuka and Io Shirai are pretty damn fine, but agree with you guys that this Moshi Yoshi Joshi, or whatever the fuck is, bro, listen. Io Shirai 
does not look like Maki Ito. Or, no. or, or, or Okada 2.0. No. Come on. Who's L? Come on. They're not even comparable, bro. Scooter the U Smith with another $10 super chat. You guys are on point. All the wrestling happening during WrestleMania week is mental. When I was a kid watching the good old days in the 90s, this much wrestling would have been heaven, but now it's hell. Yeah, because the creative sucks. Edgar Estrada with another $10 super chat. Manage that loser JD has no cojones. Kristen has them in her purse. I'll beat down Jesse Baker and leave. Just a piece for him for thunder. Worthless goon. Have a good one, JD. Cheers. Yeah, not unless I put him on timeout. <laughs> you gonna let him talk shit to you, bro? Yeah, I'm not thinking about that good man. It's a piece of shit, though. Jericho, 8131, $5 Super Chat. Should Jade Cargill join Team Taz with the amount of talent she'd be around, she could certainly improve at a much faster rate. No, she's better on her own. Just, just get better in the ring. She's got everything else. Scooter the U Smith with two $2 Super Chats. Damn it, Jesse Edgar Estrada murdering you. LOL, Jeffrey, the fuck? Share the wealth with all is you rich, sob. I don't know what the fuck that means, man. Envied. What's up, bro? 199. How did this heat start? P.S. Jeffrey, I got bills. Listen, man. Jeffrey's sitting in the VIP, bro. Listen, leave him alone. He's enjoying a nice uh, hangman's bourbon barrel stout. It's on the house. Majin, $5 super chat. Hey, J.D., do you think Blood and Guts should take place at the Jaguar Stadium instead of Daly's Place? It's not happening in Daly's Place, man. They need to be the fuck out of Daly's Place. Get out. Get out. Anyway, guys, that is it, man. We are we are done here, man. You guys are fucking crazy, man. You're keeping me, here on, you're keeping me longer on this show than I want to be. I got some fucking grinding to do on Destiny. Yeah, I'm over here fucking... Uh, Talking about Jesse and Edgar and their goddamn fucking feud. Reading hate mail against your co-host. Jesus Christ, man. Robert Lamo with $2 Super Chat there. Child Predator. That what they love, Maki Ito. TLG Kevin, 999 Super Chat. Wanted to give you some support. Love this community so much. OTS for life. Thank you, Kevin. Anyway, guys, Jesse and I are about to get out of here. Uh, Jeffrey, you fucking savage. I don't even know how to thank you, man. I don't even know how to thank you. It's crazy, man. I'll hit you up in a, in a little bit. But guys, thank you so very much for everything. Thank you for hanging out with us. We had a tremendous stream tonight. Almost 1,800 deep in the chat. Tony Paul with a 199. Love you guys. You guys are great. Thank you, man. Hopefully, we talk some logic. Hopefully, we talk some sense tonight. If you took anything away from it, please don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up, man. We got 811 likes right now. Let's try for 1,000. Follow me on social media, at JD from NY206. That's Twitter and Instagram. Hit that subscribe button down below. Like I said, turn on the bell for all notifications. Make sure you guys go out and support Dr. Squatch. DrSquatch.com. Use code SCRIPT for 20% off. And make sure you guys check the videos down below in the description. If you missed anything during the week, it is there for you. Go and support, man. You know what time it is, guys. It was a beautiful day in New York the last two days. It's going to be near 70 tomorrow. The windows are definitely down. Jesse and I got our cold beverages, man. I want you to give me those guitar emojis in the chat. Turn that volume up to max. You know what time it is, man. Pilot's coming on. That glorious guitar solo's coming in. I will see you back here Friday, live for SmackDown. And Jesse and I will see you on Wednesday next week for a big, big Dynamite show, guys. We will see you later.